So, you know, we've been working on these, uh, making sure that this record is going to record properly because sometimes I should act up in the first five to 10 seconds. But we've been working through our way um, for like the Oscar, the big Oscar nods yes. from last year. And um, <laughs> it's funny. So this one, this last one that we saw was called Women Talking. Mm -hmm. it's a mo the movie is just called Women Talking? Yeah. So I told like my buddies at work and they were like, that sounds like the worst movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> it does to me too. It's just a bunch of it's like two hours of people debating on where to eat for dinner. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, but it's actually it's actually pretty good. It's a uh, it's about this like um, men and night. Uh, it's like is it. Is that like, what is that? <laughs> before um, I say, so it's, before it's, I say um, some ignorance it's, it's shit, a, what is that? It's a, a low-tech Amish. Yeah, okay, I was going to say like Quaker That's probably the okay. best way to okay. Amish adjacent. All right, I wasn't, I wasn't far off then. Um, I'm not that fucking dumb. They moved, I guess it wasn't, it was too secular here. It was too crazy. So they moved their like compound to Bolivia. and That's far. Yeah. All the way south. Yeah, and um, deep, it's funny while while we, so. while I was yeah, for sure, um, you're East Coast, I'm far East Coast, like you're deep south, I'm far deep south. Um, I was watching, I ended up watching some um, like documentaries about it because it's like based on a true story. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, well not documentaries, but articles. And the um, the thing that was crazy was when I'm watching it, I think it's like in the fucking 1700s or some shit. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, this pickup truck comes like driving through their area, like. Uh, please fill out your census forms, your 2010 census <laughs> forms. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Um, but anyway, what happened was, uh, spoilers, uh, you know, the movie's still good. I'm not going to spoil the movie. But um, in real life, uh, these these Mennonite men were using this cow tranquilizer that they were using for their, their to slaughter their beef. And they were using it in their rooms and um, spraying, like, uh, windows spraying the bed like and these women would inhale it and they would go unconscious and th these men would go into the rooms and rape them you know eight it was like eight or eight to ten of these guys from this uh from this community would do this oh and, so it wasn't standard practice it was just these dudes yeah it was just a handful uh, a few bad havels bloody spoiled the whole bunch am i right <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, at any rate, like um, the women like were waking up in like soiled sheets and blood and all this kind of I mean, they're like, what the fuck, you know, and like in pain, you know, and, uh, you know, they would like tell the elders and the elders are like, oh, well, it's obvious what's going on here. Satan. <laughs> Satan's been in here. Right. And um, and for years, I mean, they did it for a long time. Eventually, they told the authorities and they these get the, the Bolivian police, like to their credit, like went and locked these motherfuckers up and, hmm. you know, and, and Wait, served, someone turned themselves in served swift justice. Um, no, yeah, no, they nobody turned themselves in. Oh. They, they just went and got them. OK. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fucked up. I mean, like some like in the in the movie, they even like try to like hint at like the idea that like there might even be like a fucking like as young as four years old. Jesus mm. Christ! Yeah, like just disgusting. I don't know if that's true yeah. in real life. If they just put some extra sauce on it. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's pretty monstrous, you know. So anyway, anybody else got some fun stories to share? <laughs> oh my gosh, good times! <laughs> but it, it was one of the few things I did. I'm actually pretty excited. There's a bunch of uh, so I just closed the chapter on a couple of shows, okay. and now I'm getting ready to open a new chapter. Joe, it's just like life in many ways. You close one door, and another door opens. And um, I have a few more shows I'm going to watch, uh, like Shrinking or The Shrink. It's like a show on Apple TV. It's got Harrison Ford in it. It's supposed to be pretty funny. And then there's another show that's coming to HBO. Or I think it's live now mm -hmm. about. Uh, it's a dramatized version of it, but it's about Watergate that looks like it's oh, going to uh, be fucking like dead down, on. Down both y'all alleys. Yeah. I feel yeah, like. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Shrink is, it's, it's like a, not honey, I shrunk the kids. No, I More think like, it's like about therapy. Therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause there was a Matt Damon movie not too long ago where it got, got so small. expensive to live. Yeah. You got shrunk. And then like after he did it, his wife decided she didn't want to do it. Yeah. That I, was that, I don't remember I the name of one. downsizing. That was yes, the name of yes. it. Yes, yeah. It actually makes sense. It does. Like you just got like however much more percentage of resources. Yeah, how many? Never got smaller. How many people can you feed with a cow now? <laughs> how now, brown cow? You know, there's been like a popular thing going around also about like um, uh, you know, we just recorded recently, so I feel like yes, we have we have time to ago. play today yeah, a little yeah, bit. Sure. Um, so let's talk about snitching for a minute. Okay, it's, it's running. So that's a that's a that's a. That's a Gray area, yeah. To me. So it's been running rampant recently. Snitching, yeah. And to me, it's it's pretty specific, right? It's like if it's like if if you give up somebody to save your ass, 
right? Okay, okay, because like, like, like I, if 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 there's not so, you, you're, so you're not counting like Good Samaritan. I saw this man. Right, that's, that's not, not that's, that's just some people being call a because there's a sentence. Yeah, I, that's called so being a good citizen. So, so you're speaking no, of like having inside information and to get yourself out of trouble, trouble you, you give somebody See, up. That's okay. what I stand. But like, there's been times when like the peak. T-shirt down past the knees um, era, era of stop where like, you Agreed. can't say nothing to nobody. Even Agreed. if you got your ass, and you I can't think, say nothing. I think I may have even felt that way at some point. But I think as I've as I've grown up, grown up I've yeah. been like, you know what, like, like, and even like I, I hear like, you know, some of these documentaries or interviews I watch with gang members, they're like, no, like civilians are civilians. Like they don't, they're not, they're not required to adhere to the same rules. Yeah. Um. But I asked that. I asked that to say that. I asked that to ask this. Um. Recently, it's come out that some like the the question, right? Like, I think it had to do with Ti. It doesn't matter. Um, just not about him specifically, but just in general, right? Um, you and I get locked up for doing criminal activity, right? Okay. Like separately, separately. We just happen to be in well, the same place. Yeah. Well, we're doing it together. Let's say we're doing it. Okay. Together. So, so we we're so bad at criminaling, we both got caught. <laughs> Correct. Oh boy. Um, we go to jail, and while in jail, I die. Okay. And then when you go to trial, you say it was all me. Uh-huh. Is that snitching? I just think well, that's a clever manipulation yeah. of the, of the current tr- events. It also depends if it's true or not. Well, no, it would not be true. True, yeah, no. You, you know, it would be like, it would be once again like tr- saving your ass by throwing it all on your dead friend. That, that would be that's kind of fucked and up. That would be interesting. That I mean. You might as well have said, "Oh, it was that dude over there?" Because I mean, you have no ev- if unless there's evidence. If there's evidence that would maybe lean it more towards you, anyways, and I was going to get like the lesser of the sentences. Oh yeah, it was all Bobby's idea. Yeah, See, I just I just want to stay. I home feel like and, the dead and, person's uh, like friends and family cyberpunk. would be pissed at you for like uh, sl- like you know doing that. I would think so. I mean, they're already dead, and you're gonna fucking pop more dirt. Well, on them. I don't know, Bobby. What do you think about that? I think it's a like. So I, I, I think it's. A, I think it's okay. okay. Like I, I, I think that if if you Just and if if that planning did, the scenarios out in my head <laughs> right. for later. If you and I, if this happened to you and I, mm-hmm. and I'm gone, by all means, I want my friend to go home. Go home. Gotcha. Go home. Put it on me. I'm. I can't do anything about it. Put it on me. Go so, home. So Ja Rule told us this a long time ago. I know you're tired of being lonely. <laughs> so baby girl, put it on me. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know he was talking about murdering your, your celly and, and pinning it on him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got. All right, Joe, you got your coffee first. Chris, how hey. was your nerd week? And a weird twist of fate. It really goes It was, it was very, very it oddly. Was down down to the wire. Minute. It was down to the wire. It was down to the wire. Um, I, I had a... Basically, we've had a weekend. <laughs> I had a super lazy weekend, and I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I needed one. Good I got you. a little. I got caught up on every, all my projects, um, and like I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna veg out. Um, I'll, I'll Dude, eat. did you do any pigging out too? Do some vegging out and pigging out. I did some vegging out and some protein and out. And <laughs> yeah, a buddy all of sorts mine. of good stuff. Uh, one time we were like, you know, we're grown ass fucking men, and uh, we were talking about getting together one day. And uh, he was like, I was like, what do you want to do? And he's like, man, I don't know. He's like, what do you do when you're fucking, you know, in your 30s and you want to hang out? He's like, you want to come over and watch a movie and we can pig out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, order some Litos, fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, I'll fuck it up all right by throwing it in the garbage disposal. <laughs> so uh, went and saw John Wick 4? Yes. Oh, nice, dude. <laughs> You gave it. Uh, you gave it. I was spoilers. You gave it a solid eight point five. I did. I did. I, that was after the first viewing. I've seen it twice now. All right. All right. I went and saw it with Kelly did on it get Thursday. Even, did it get even better on the second viewing? I imagine. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's it is uh, literally action packed to the gills. I think there's fourteen fight scenes, and we're not talking about like and, me and Joe are fighting. It's and fourteen like, lines of dialogue. All of these hot toys come alive, and they're all fighting off all at once. It's <laughs> it's it's insane. It's. I'll be honest with you. It's getting a little fast and a little furious. Just it, it's, I mean, it was getting that way like towards it, the, like halfway through three. It, and that was, it was, like, and and then it's just like, come on, man. So like, I'm going to four with different lens, and I went in with two. Yeah, I mean, it's you still, know, it's 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 yeah, it started to get way over the top, like. But I just have to shift my perspective and still enjoy it. Yeah, Donnie Young is 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 one of the the. Uh, Bad guys, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Yeah. You never guess he plays a blind guy. Oh, perfect! It's, it's perfect. It, Meta, but it's it all it all tells the story. It's practice <laughs> doing that. I saw a picture of Stevie uh, Wonder recently without his glasses. That I've never seen before. Fuck me up. Okay, uh, I'll, 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 I'll pull it up. While oh, you're, thanks. While you're, I didn't. I, I didn't know he was still alive. Yeah, not, oh, not yeah. that I thought he was dead, but I, like I didn't know the glasses came off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. Um, I didn't either. 
so there's some some really awesome cinematography in this part of it is shot from above mm. like with a drone i guess somehow um and he, they're using these um it looks like an ar-15 but it's a fucking shotgun mm. and it, it and there's some sort of like incinerary rounds or however you say it, incendiary uh-huh. Uh-huh. rounds uh, they create a thermal event, I guess, as you could say. Uh, and just visuals are great, man. The, the fight scenes are fantastic. I, mean, I think that's what you go for at this point. Yeah. They're not cor- necessarily the lore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, uh, there, it is chock full of lore, too. Uh, it's no it's got to be too much lore is the problem, I think. I, it, I don't think you're right, you're right about that. I think... I, I don't know if we'll get another John Wick movie. That's a, okay. Rock on, Playboy. That's a Stevie Wonder with his glasses off. Not the worst. No, uh, just, just, uh, when you said that, I imagined something I'm worse. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I would even have recognized him if you had told me. Who I that, agree. Yes, I agree. Say, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just a like creep. I was like, whoa. Like, uh, you know, I've seen one guy the whole, a whole one way in my one, entire yeah. life, 40 some years, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Continue. No, that's fine. So Stevie Wonder, just for the record, is not in the John Wick movies. Which is a bummer. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> if, he could, if he could sword fight, it'd probably be pretty cool. But um, He never makes anything worse. A lot of world building in this. There's a lot of nuggets dropped for different directions I think they can take um, in this series, world. Maybe. There is a TV series in yeah. the works. It's the Continental set in the, set in the 70s, I think. And then there's a video some, game. Um, video game in the works as well, I believe. Supposedly, there's a AAA video game in the works, and then there's a t- uh, a movie called Ballerina, which if you've seen yes, John Wick 3, you understand yeah. that. Um, that um, it's coming out next year. So right. it was it was a lot of fun. It's a long movie. It is It, it could have been two movies. I think they could have. I think they just wanted to get this story told and move on to something else. But um, How long was it? Hey, yo. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look. I think it's two and a half hours for, okay. for something like that. It's a long, long ass movie, but just an action yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's ton. The fight scenes are just the cor- the choreography that they do is mind boggling. I watched a video on uh, YouTube today actually of all the guns that that they use in it, and it's not just off the shelf stuff anymore. It's like seven thousand dollar custom built pistols and. Um, crazy shit like that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yep. So, uh, I watched everything everywhere all at once and I thought it was great. There you go. Awesome. From both, from both sides. Right. <laughs> I know you like the story component and, and I, I like, you like I it like overall. Yeah. I, I thought it was, it was fantastic. It made my wife cry and she had, I will say a revelation about her childhood and her relationship with her parents. Oh really? That movie. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, and now it's out. She could let go of something. I'm like, that's great. Good for her. That's great. Um, continuing the movies, uh, watched Cocaine Bear this week. Oh, oh, I still yeah. need to watch that. What is it on? Oh. In the theater? So we actually uh, copied your idea, and we paid 20 bucks to watch it, or 15 bucks to watch oh, it. Oh, through Amazon or whatever? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it was already out on that, so I'm like, fuck it, we'll watch it. Oh, it's great. Same it, universe as John Wick, I assume. It could, might, as, <laughs> might as well be. Might as well be. <laughs> yeah. It is. Um, I can see Cocaine Bear showing up with the Continental with the suitcase. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, Cocaine Bear is dead. But uh, it spoilers. Is, yeah, it is. Uh, it is ridiculous beyond belief and just absolutely hilarious. And now they got one coming out with like a, a gator on. Oh, that you're gonna have all sorts of sci. Yeah, the Meth sci-fi gator. sci-fi. <laughs> Meth gator. I think it is. Sounds right. I think that really I'm, is. I've coming. never heard of it, but it sounds exactly right. <laughs> from the, from the people who brought you Sharknado, I guarantee yeah, yeah, you, it's yeah. meth. It's yeah, uh, what else would a gator, gator do? We're definitely in Florida doing meth. Yeah. Oh, it fucking bath salts. It bath salts out. gator. Yeah. Um. It, it was phenomenal. I thought it was well acted. It was Ray, I guess, Ray, Ray Liotta's last film. Mm-hmm. Um, send he up, he plays like a 1980s. Why are you laughing? He <laughs> plays a 1980s dude, bro. Hey, dude, this he, motherfucker's he, he, been in like great fucking films, man. Played, this is not the best send off for Ray Liotta. He plays. It could a, be worse. He plays a 1980s, probably stuck a little bit in the 70s. Uh, drug lord uh, out of um, uh, where was he out of uh, Missouri out that of sounds St. Louis. Amazing. What was his role before this? And see if it would have been better if he went out that way because we don't. I he, don't know. He was in a TV like a procedural NCI something show. Uh, it had Jennifer Lopez in it. Um, it came on a couple years. I saw him and he was so full of fillers. I'm like, yeah. who is this guy? He was great in uh, Hannibal. You know, let yeah. alone, of course, Goodfellas. But that was know. that was yeah, yeah, a very long time ago. That's a long time ago. He, Hannibal was fucking amazing. With yes, it. and he's like, when he's like a complete asshole when he's all drugged up and shit. And he, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I let Kelly pick a movie, and we ended up watching 2009's Gamer. 
starring oh, J- uh, Gerard Butler, Gerard Butler, yes. and uh, Terry Crews. It is awful. Terry Crews, I don't remember Terry Crews being in it. He's like the pseudo. He's like the villains heavy. So, so the premise <clears throat> is. I think the premise is interesting. In this future world, um, you can either pay to control another human being or you can get paid to be controlled Mm -hmm. so basically you know it's just a big it's like sims but a sex orgy constantly right and the other the the guy who invented this has now invented um it's uh oh you're uh, on death row well if you can Chia. if <laughs> if you want to if you want to you can you know play this Monetary, game as yeah. a as a you know basically it's like Call of Duty live action mm. uh, and if you win 30 games then uh, you you're you're free hmm. and no one's ever in, you're the first person that's ever gotten past 10 and you're like 28 I don't know it's 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 not great speaking of which is interesting and it's funny how <laughs> How was it 2009, which was 14 years ago? Like the world has changed as far as what's acceptable to say in a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were you saying, Bobby? I was going to say that um, uh, we had your Death Row wine. Oh, well, you didn't tell me. I know. For wine and cheese, we had it. And what's funny is we kind of expected it to be trash, right? Like, just, you know. We loved it. Really? And, and then we looked it up like on our, on our like, we have like a, Laura keeps like a wine app. Where sure, it, sure. You know, of you course. Know, and then she grades it so it recommends stuff and whatever. It was already a 94% match for us based on our preferences. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is great. Well, what, you didn't do a Death Row episode, did you? No, we already did a Death Row Oh, that's episode. right. We did, that's uh, right. We, we did it to wine and cheese, so to speak. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wrong yeah. show. Sorry. It was good. It was good, though. It was like, we, we quite enjoyed it. <laughs> so thank you. Can't no hood fuck with Death Rizzo. Yeah, that's what they say. That's all Snoop Dogg's doing, man. He bought he bought Death Row and yeah. probably said, "Hey, Martha Stewart, I need to build a brand and get music back on streaming." Yeah, there which you is go. nice. Um, and the last movie that I watched was Nope. I haven't seen that. This I still is one watch of the Peel and Kill and Peel. Kill Kill and Peel. Uh, I believe it's. I think that's what happens when you get dragged under the boat, right? The, Back uh, in the day. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the uh, yes. The, the, the short Chappelle, one. The Chappelle knockoff. Yes. <laughs> Not the tall one. The, the short one. Okay. Um, I don't know what I was expecting it to be, but it was. I was a. I was expected expecting to be frightened in some capacity, oh. or, but like. It reminded me of an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I'm, I'm like surprised because you're not a horror person. It, well, and that's why I wasn't sure exactly that's what it was. And it's not. I don't know what it is, to be honest. Suspense. It is to an extent, but they kind of... And this goes back... So so I can tie John Wick into this, too. You know, a lot of the times... Uh, we'll, we'll use the Mandalorian for an example. The 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 first two seasons of the Mandalorian. What are we trying to get to the Jedi? Right, we're trying right. to get. Well, we get to the Jedi, and then now what do we do? Um, we do a freak of the week. I know, but I'm just saying, like the the reason you're watching is to see right. get to this point. Right. And in John Wick four and in this this other movie, you find the thing that you think you're going to see at the end happens like almost immediately. Right. And it's like. I'm interested in the rest of it, but that was why I was here is to see this happen, and it happens almost instantly. It, it, it back to nope. It is a very clever UFO kind of movie. Um, it's very different than anything like that I've ever seen. I think it's worth a watch. It's cleverly done. I thought, I thought it's well acted. I enjoy the 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 lead actor. I can't remember his name, but he's been in some of his other movies. And um, yeah, I've only watched um, Get Out. I've not, I want to watch Nope. Yeah, and, uh, Smile is the other one, the new one that came out. Yeah, it, that's not his though, is it? It's I think, not, okay. I think oh, Us is the other one. Us, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well yeah, I, I just know there was two movies I need to catch up on. Yeah, from him. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Joe, how about you? So I'm uh, Joe. I see you're wearing a wedding band. Yeah, I got it got given to me. Well, hey, let's make some noise for that. That's, <laughs> that's a nice gift. Yes, you know, that's a nice gift. I'm just recognizing it. Cool. Observant. I'm observant. Yeah. I'm wearing, wearing, well, I'm, when I'm not using my hands. Right. Right. So we're just like, I, I don't actually wear it to work, which I think most people do because I do a lot of things with my hands. I don't wear my ring at all just because it's, it's, it's a liability at work. And mm-hmm. Yeah. You think at being a pharmacist, you don't use your hands much. It's just like <clears throat> more office job. It's like, it's very hands on. Yeah, I mean, because do you guys? I mean, do you do the bottling and such? I do a lot uh-huh. that like some pharmacists don't. Right, like 
one of the reasons why techs like me. Like you can choose to be a lot of different kind of pharmacist. Right. Like, you right, can right. be. You can literally pull up a chair and sit there, and like scan stuff all day and, and just That'd sit there and wait for everyone to do something. I couldn't something. do that just, either. I couldn't. Yeah. yeah I mean, it makes the day go by I do, quicker, I do right? fucking everything. I'll, go, yeah. I'll, run, I'll run the register. I'll, fuck, I, I do, I'll, like, I'll fucking take out the trash. I don't give a fuck. That and the fact that like, I can't stand watching people work. Yeah, like, man. Like, like I don't know how people like, do it. I, yeah. I've seen people do that. I'm just like, how, like, what kind of person are you? I struggle. I struggle with it. Like, yeah. even if I pay somebody to like deliver something, you as soon as they, you, I'm it's like, you guys need a hand? Like, I think it's the difference between pharmacists who started out as technicians. Uh-huh. It's a couple of things. It's both work ethics and someone who started out as a technician. If you start out as a technician, like me, I was a technician for years. You know, like that end. You mm-hmm. know how the struggle. You know the seeing lazy pharmacists. Like so, when you become the pharmacist, a <clears> lot <throat> of us are like, I'm not going to be that guy, right? Some people are like, well, I went through being a tech, so now I got to sit my ass down. Those are bad. And then some people go straight to school after high school and then go straight to being a pharmacist, and they think they're better. They mm-hmm. literally think they are better than the technicians. They're above them, and that that tech work is beneath them. And right. they just sit there. Mm, I see. It sounds like a, almost like a child's like game they play outside. Like, hey, miss me outside and play lazy pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, I, I I do everything. So I can't I can't have shit on my hand. Right. Um. So I'm 900 plus episodes into One Piece. 900 oh, plus. Like that, like uh, I don't think I'm at 910. Really yet. picks up around 6:48. It picks up, but I'm just, like, just kidding. It's got, some Five. Good, it's got some good parts, I've heard. It's got m- many good parts. Maj- like, amazingly to me, a majority of the 900 episode plus are good. <clears throat> Other than, of course, like the all the bullshit in the episode sometimes, like the intro taking like five minutes mm-hmm. to recap. Yeah. Or like flashback. This anime, anime uh, series are famous for that to like draw out time. So oh, okay. there's flash. There's way too many flashbacks that doesn't actually happen in the manga, and that's because it's not necessary. You like, I just watch this episode. Even if you were watching it weekly, you don't need to flashback something from three episodes ago, which is right. less than a month ago. But they do. So like with the actual content involved, a lot of times it's only like 15 minutes worth of new content in an episode. But they are all good. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm excited because like this arc is like the arc of um chris's favorite character zoro like okay. they're in like a very japanese country right now there has not been a very japanese country in all of the 900 plus episodes and like even the art style change is very like hokusai very like the traditional looking japanese painting you can think of like oh the, the yeah, ladies yeah, look yeah, like, yeah yeah like the pointy face and then the boys are like fingers and shit hmm. eyes big eyes like <laughs> very very slanty eyes yeah but oh i guess i also feel like they're like the demon eyes yes that yeah. too but yeah yeah and like hey uh, don't demonize demon eyes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we just, it just that this arc just picked up a few episodes ago and i'm already really into it so I'm, i think we almost caught up by almost caught up meaning um we're almost to episode 1000 whatever right because <laughs> they're in a thousand something episodes yeah, i think i think kelly is up to date like waiting on new episodes i, I can't I'm, I'm gonna stop at the end of the arc before oh, i know how you are yeah i mean i have no problem waiting because no. obviously and I, I i can't i can't do the fucking work to week shit especially with one piece being how like drawn out it is right okay because now with the i'll use country roll and you can just fast forward through bullshit parts mm. easily but country roll has the fucking worst app on playstation do they? I don't know how it is on computer because I don't use a computer to use Crunchyroll, but on the PlayStation, like it runs awful. So whoever ported hmm. that to the com- to PlayStation is they need a new guy. We use it on the Roku, and I I don't use it, but I don't hear any complaints about it either. Yeah, so maybe I think it's just a PlayStation thing because like every other app, YouTube, Hulu, hmm. all the other shit runs just fine. I might not like the interface, but they run fine. Like Crunchyroll. Like every time you log in, it will ask you to sign it, sign in, even oh, though you, man, you ask to stay to sign in. And but then once you go and put your email and password in, it's like, oh, you already signed in. I <laughs> every single fucking time. I wonder if it's some sort of like Sony versus whoever owns Crunchyroll. Like, is that is that who owns Crunchyroll? No, no, no. I'm oh, saying because oh, Sony's PlayStation, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm sure they want things done a certain way, and they might have just and, said, and screw this, you guys, here's what we'll give you, make it work. And this big lag. Uh, there's like mm. a la- noticeable lag when you like want to fast forward change episodes and the way the episodes are laid out are very confusing that's like you're having to find the episode of the season because they have uh, all the like a bunch of languages right because it's mm-hmm. Crunchyroll but each language subtitle is not you don't go in, like at Netflix you go into a show you select <clears> which <throat> subtitle no each episode has multiple listings per subtitle 
So each episode would have like English, uh, for Japanese, fucking French, whatever. But the names of the anime are so long, you can't actually see what language is. So you have to kind of scroll through and find English. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. And they're all spliced in together, so you can't actually tell what episode and what season you're on. Hmm. So the only way is you have play an episode and you let it go to the next one. And it will go to the right one. Yeah, good. But God forbid you, you lose your place. Because it will kick that you out sometimes. Awful. Too. Yeah, it is. But I, it's still, I still pay for it, so I still use it. I think Jaina uses it too. Who? Jaina. Does she use our Crunchyroll? Your, your daughter. Uh, what are you calling her? Jaina? Jane, I thought you were saying FEMA. FEMA? No. no. I, was like, <laughs> I thought I said Jaina. I, 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 said Jaina. Yeah, I was like, who in the fuck are you? And, you're like, and I was like, does she have some anime nickname I don't know about? Because I want to fucking know. <laughs> no, I think you're just hearing. She's, she's a fucking you're, you're, half dog person. I see him. I see oh, him. Oh, <laughs> Fumetto Alchemist? It's good, good, uh, <laughs> I good see reference. It. I see it on our fucking friends. Um... Because someone is using all country but I don't know. I've I've, I've shared it with a, a couple of people. I don't think so. I'll ask her. She was watching. It seems it seems like something she would watch, but like again, it's just popular shit anyway. Spy she's, Family and uh, Tokyo Revenge. She's watching Tokyo Revengers. She's, yeah, I, I noticed that on Crunchyroll. So oh, I, is she watching? I, maybe she I don't know it. if it's her or somebody else because it's popular right now. I think. Okay, I'll ask her. I'll ask her. It sounds interesting. I, I want to watch that too. But I'll, I'm been keep people keep telling because I I keep saying I like um low. Commitment things or like low yeah. stress level things. And everyone's telling me watches can't buy. Passive. Anything. That was that one I was telling you about last week. I couldn't. I was like Tokyo was revenge yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you Tokyo, me, uh, Tokyo drift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You sent me the text afterward, but no, it's some some something about a campfire an anime name, but it's a, it's cooking. I, I like cooking animes. I like food wars. Yeah. Because they usually do legit food, and I don't want to fucking eat it. Hey, did you you watch some show called Co- Cocktail Wars or something where people were making yeah. drinks? drinks? Yeah, and cocktail. Yeah. yeah, on on Netflix. So whoever won that was on the Today Show the other morning. That's my only point of reference. Is like, oh, that's that thing Joe watches. Yeah, I like. It made me want a fancy stuff. cocktail though. But yes, yeah. so, so I was watching Bar Rescue every Sunday because it's a marathon. I, I forgot. Do you like Bar Rescue? I don't. Uh, it's so ridiculous. You never really talk about it too much, but yeah, but that's like just like maintenance that, shows. You just that's one of those guilty pleasure you just put on when you're doing something else. This is this this is so much drama. I don't I, I don't want competition show with drama. I just want a competition. Well, this isn't a competition. This is ridiculous. The bar rescue is. It's where the guy comes in and the you know the, the uh, kitchen mess. Sucks. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he yells at him, and then their best friends. Yeah, it, it's the it's, shit. There's like a restaurant show like that in there. There's, uh, like, there's Gordon Ramsay or some shit. Yeah, they come in and like try to fucking fix up your shitty restaurant. It, it was that big tall guy. Uh, I can't think of his name, but it wasn't Gordon Ramsay. But he had a Gordon Ramsay vibe to him. Mm-mm. He was a British guy. Yeah, actually but, married to a pro wrestler. Oh, is it a jacked dude yeah. with glasses? Yeah, I see him at um, the, the Arnold okay. sometimes because he sells proteins. I'm sure and he's uh, he's married to a retired it, wrestler. It, it tastes like shit. Oh. His his stuff just like, like I've Robert. Gone and, take that, Robert. I mean, dickhead. Because th- there's so name. much. <laughs> I mean, he seems like a nice guy. I, I gotta look his name. He's not jacked. I don't give a fuck. I'm just but, making jokes. About <laughs> but I don't know him personally. I don't watch his stuff. I just know he's a jacked. Take your chef. shitty ass fucking protein shake. It's and not get good. The f- kick rocks. Robert yeah. Irvin. Yes, Irvin. Robert Irvin. Because like you go to fucking Arnold and it's just aisles and aisles and aisles of fucking yeah, protein sure. shit. Like like bro, you're a big name. Your shit yeah. should taste better. That's him with uh, Gail Kim. Is a retired pro wrestler. Oh. Recently retired. Right. He is or she is. She is. She is. He looks like he could be there. Yeah, that could be his like, angle, like a chef that you know that yeah. wrestles. Yeah, it's oh, and he comes out with like a uh, like a spatula. It sounds like a, an, an anime. Hat. Yes, it definitely sounds like an anime. Yes, there's a guy that comes out now uh, throwing the pizza dough up out to the ring. They you, see you, you, what, you, it, it, they, they're like, it's okay for Street Fighter. It's okay for real life. Hey, whatever, you, you, listen, you, whatever you can do to get over. You ain't got to make pizza. They got food there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how we got here, but yes, uh, One Piece. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm continuing my Coffee House Crime uh, uh, binge mm-hmm. while I'm doing stuff. Interesting. I, it's funny because, like I said, I want low commitment, low stress stuff. Mm-hmm. And this real life, real crime is that what's called true crime stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you think it's high stress, but like not, not really. I don't know. Maybe it's the attach, or maybe it's the way that this guy. Presents it, Does but some of the stuff like... is pretty heinous. Like, says so a crime, like, because you know how I get pretty fucking indignant when I hear injustice. But like, it's... injustice. But I think mostly it's because uh, the people get caught here. Hmm. Uh-huh. So like, there's 
I think 99% of the time people get caught and get what they deserve. So like, I think it's, it's when people either don't get caught or they get caught and they get off easy. That fucks me up. Did yeah. you ever see Joker, the movie Joker, the Hakeem Phoenix or whatever? No, Hakeem. What is this? Joaquin? Wa- 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 see, my buddy, my, growing up, my buddy had a doll named Hakeem. I think I'll always fuck it up in my head. Um, I, I think he would probably dig it a fair bit, to be honest with you. But I mean, uh, It's not... Something I'm against watching. Mm-hmm. It's just like so low on my list of things. Yeah, to watch. no, 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 but no, no. If, there was, if it was like ever on, I would watch it. Soft sale. It's just uh, yeah, that yeah. it sounds like something that would be up your alley, so to speak. Mm-mm-mm. But um, so I, I like like this British guy who was, likes coffee and talks about real crime. Um, he, the recent one I just watched while I'm driving this morning. So uh, a big deal in Hong Kong right now. Mm. Apparently, just like super nice, rich and fashionable lady got fuck they found her body in pieces mm. apparently like her ex's whole family connived to fucking kill her after she bought them like like a six million dollar home and shit like that wow but, like yeah i don't know it's, i find this stuff kind of fascinating yeah 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 like real monsters i actually have a um a tie into that from my nerd week i'll go ahead and get it out of the yeah, way yeah, go ahead uh, sh- I had a, there's a show that we do on Patreon called the kitchen table. Yes. Um, and I did an episode here Saturday night, uh, shout out to Casey and Gomez. They were here and, um, which was the four mics are set up, but, um, dude, I got to give a shout out. I don't know if he's listening, but it, I got to give a special shout out to Casey. So the, the guest that we had on, um, and I'm going to leave a lot of details out cause it's their business and it's private to an extent. Uh, you can find it's it. It's private though. unless you pay for it on Patreon. Well, well, I mean, uh, yeah, well, that, but also like this event that yes. happened. Yes. Um. So the the guest that we had, I respect the fuck out of him. Like, I respect the fuck out of this dude. Like, he's one of the few people on this planet that whenever he talks, I just want to put my chin into my fucking palms on my hands and mm-hmm. just soak up everything that he has to say, so to speak. Um. But his sister was tragically murdered by a serial killer. Oh, Jesus. Mm. And uh, I had asked him a couple questions, you know, to like you know just about life and shit and i was like i was testing the waters and he was pretty reserved on certain things yeah. so i wrote it off it, I, I wasn't yeah. gonna casey went for it Why and not? he opened up about it wow wow that's yeah fucking crazy it's a it's on it's, it's a podcast on patreon it's becoming it's probably it's my second most listened to show on there consistently like mm. uh, people are really really loving it I mean, it's, I mean, it's the format ba, 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 drew them into Patreon. Probably, <laughs> if they like this format, they obviously like. Yeah, it. it's uh, it, but like it, all of those episodes have like gone to like some like dark or like emotional <laughs> place. Like, like I, I keep these out now just in case. Wow. Yeah. Like that's uh, interesting because it gets it gets it gets it gets fucked up in here sometimes. The vibe gets fucked up. Um, but it's it's good though. It's like therapeutic. Mm, you know? Yes. Like. Yeah, free, free, free therapy. Just get together, group of friends, and talk about your shit. You don't have to worry about it. And, and, and mic it, mic up. And then monetize it. And monetize it. Don't pay for therapy. My, dude, get monetize paid. your pain. Yeah, get paid for your therapy. Monetize your pain. This, this is a business model. All you got to do is have them sign a waiver. And don't say you're a doctor. Yeah. 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 Your Dr. Pay. Phil said, calls himself a doctor, and that's fine. He's not a doctor. Well, he was. <laughs> was he? Of what? Yeah, I don't know. Of fucking plumbing? I think a doctor of lawyering. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's, lawyer, see, that, that, I don't know. That, that word that, is very uh, doctor? misleading. The word doctor. Yes, because people confuse it with MD. Exactly. Yes. Fucking. I'm stupid. a doctor of thugonomics. <laughs> Dude, that's to talk about this shit. Talk about that shit. Um, <laughs> some John Cena shit. Let's see. What is it? Is it? Uh, he has a doctorate in clinical psychology. Does he? Hmm? Wow. From University of North Texas. I thought he wasn't a doctor. <laughs> and, and Phoenix a post, Institute. And a postdoctoral fellowship in forensic psychology from some other school. Okay. But he's, uh, okay. There you go. I mean, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's more credential than I thought he had. Yeah, same. I mean, he graduated college before I was born, so good for him. Good for him. Yeah. Wasn't he running for like some sort of political? It was Dr. Oz. Oh, okay, different, <laughs> di- different TV doctor, Doctor <laughs> Mehmet Oz. That's how my brain works. He was running. Uh, <laughs> he was running brain. for uh, Senate. But of he's Congress. a known quack. Look, look. Here's the thing. He's a real doctor, but I would trust something Doctor Phil say over Doctor Oz any day. Well, Doctor Phil's not offering medical advice either. It's mostly. Yeah. Stop yelling at your mama. And that should make sense more than what Dr. Oz is saying. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Run tell that. He's like he's Run a tell fucking that. quack, man. But people I mean he's probably Dude, she's a matter. fucking multimillionaire, man. Mm-hmm. Hmm? It's insane. The Run Tell That girl. 
Or uh, how about that? How, how about, about that? that? Yeah, oh, how about that? Catch yeah. me outside. How about that? That's that's life. Because she went and fucking had an OnlyFans when she turned eighteen and got lit. Yep. The, the regular lituation, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's life That's one of those injustices you have to just pass along in the world Is there an OnlyFans reviewer? <laughs> I don't know Phil That's a hell of an it's idea Phil. If Tell not, Phil yeah, You Phil. know like you just subscribe to like a couple OnlyFans for like a month You know and then you space out the content of like You should do it Yeah maybe You, you came up with the idea <laughs> You should do that before this episode of <laughs> airs You need an angel investor I mean, though, like, to pay for the subscription <laughs> Depends It depends like how Like not all so, of them are exp- I don't I, There's tears So you, like get, you get right? an OnlyFans to pay that only on the only fans you review the other only fans yeah and they'll probably get gifted a lot of subscriptions yeah oh yeah that's right <sighs> hope you're listening phil like you just have to make your uh sub like less money than whatever you're reviewing exactly sub. Be like oh let me pay this guy three dollars so i don't have to pay the, <laughs> the five dollars <laughs> to like yeah. what he reviews it yeah you know yeah no, i think it's genius i can give it like two dicks up <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> No, but see, you'd have two to be dicks a, two dicks and a half. You'd feet. have to be unbiased. You'd have to review everything. <laughs> two dicks in a semi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you like feet? <laughs> hey, man. You know, just check it out. See, was man, like, whatever you're into. Man, guess. this bitch can really step on a turtle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Speaking of turtles, I went to the aquarium. Did you really? Yeah, last Friday, yeah, Baltimore Aquarium. With who? Krista. That's awesome. Where did you guys? How did you guys find it to be? Great. Did you pay full price? I guess. You shouldn't. Hit me up in the future. There's always coupons out there. That shit's <laughs> no. expensive. I don't know. I just went and bought tickets there. Yeah, I like that fucking shit. Um, fucking, yeah. So, what, like, time flies. I thought it was, it's big, but not, not the hugest space, right? And, yeah. And I was, I thought it was, like, a couple hours. Like, we're there for, like, five hours. Yeah. Like, there was, I mean, that interesting, I guess. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like I, we went in and we like we didn't like rush nor did we like especially slow down. Right. Like, yeah. We stayed at each place as long as we wanted to right. hang out. And by the time we were done it was like five hours later. Wow. Did I you, was I was there, it was a it was a work related thing, but they had opened it up for us for a private event. I mean I I walked <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Did you pet the horseshoe crab? Mm, I no, I didn't touch any animals. I, I, I'll tell you, like that, some something about looking through that thick ass glass, like, kind of makes me motion sick. Only if you're moving around, you have to like look in one spot. Don't like if you move your head and stuff. Yeah, everything warps. It just science it says I'm gonna just wobble like a wacky flailing. Because that shit is like man, I'm so tall, half a foot fucking thick. Yeah, wobbly, wobbly, drop, drop it like it's high. Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, and and it's uh, deceptively big. Could you go all the way to the top, or do they have it closed still? No, they had Australia. They had oh, no, yeah, I saw Australia. Yeah, they had it open. Okay, good. The, they, I saw a fucking sloth hanging out. Picking, okay, picking that's trees. cool. They've got that part of it open. They didn't have that open when I was there. Okay, yeah, no, that was up some birds. Yeah. Like, birds. Chris, like, but Chris, all she did was look at the plants. I'm like, I know this plant. And she's like a plant fucking lady now. She's like, that, oh, we have one of those at home. I'm like, why the fuck do we have this at home? That three uh, three flipper turtles gone. He, he passed away. That one, if you remember, like it was like a famous Baltimore turtle. He had like three flippers. One was like fucked up. I do not know your ways. <laughs> well, anyway, he passed away. It's pretty sad. RIP. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, years. and yeah, mer- terrapins are Maryland. Dude, I was hurting them in the home of the terrapins. Hove line for everything. I, the, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? Um, but um, I enjoyed. I didn't know there were goth turtles. I very much enjoyed that. They had black shells, black lipstick, and like a little patch on their head that's black. It looks like emo hair. Turtles. You're dipping your toes back into the goth bit. I see it on the necklace. I see it in the jewelry. Like it's not. It's not lost on me. What do goth like? Goth people used to have like a ton of fucking cool music to listen to, mm-hmm. and they really, I feel like they don't anymore. <laughs> they like, still listen to the same music. Yeah, yes. I, I guess. Is it is that the case? I mean, I guess I'm just like, I'm not the person to ask, I guess. Well, can you ask your, I'm sure your circle? Sure. My circle. You have a you goth know, like, circle. If you think about like the goth, like the, the, it's the, not the cool table anymore. It's the goth circle. The, the goth Rushmore, right? Like, like if you were going to make a fist. Uh, with five choices instead of four, right? It's mm-hmm. it's it's Manson, mm-hmm. Reznor, mm-hmm. Maynard, mm-hmm. Same, uh, same same thing, uh, Zombie, uh-huh. and Ramstein. To oh. me, that's Back like then. the, the yeah. bit, yeah. But I haven't seen like anybody really huge on that scene 
sense. And and I, I think ghost, Ma- yeah, ghost, ghost is yeah. kind of but ghost with an H. I can't handle, an I can't H. handle them. I tried. There's some really poppy music though. Yeah, and it's like it's it's softer than I would want it to be. I'm um, sure there's there's a lot of <clears throat> industrial bands and things. I mean, that they're are not. On I would like. That's what I'm saying. Is I want radar. People, but they aren't big. As I think it's not popular. P- right me, PMO, put me on. Okay, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you're looking for popular, obviously it's not popular. What does just it need like, to be popular? Like, just like metal, is it? What you know? I'm no, sure no, no, they're no, still no. making metal music, but, but it's not. Well, that's what I'm saying is yeah. because you had to do much, so much digging in the crates, as it were, ask and find out some suggestions. Oh, yeah. of, I mean, like, I get somebody suggestions. modern. I get sent stuff that I put on my somebody uh, modern Spotify. to check out. That's like in that pocket, or you know, it would be like the natural succession. Because mm. I, I mean, I love that shit. You know, I love, I love that shit. Um, heavy. You know, some of my favorite music. I have, I have it tattooed on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, so I like this turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Does he like mope about and sort of like they, discuss, just hang discuss on, the meaninglessness I, I of a, life? I think I have a... <laughs> Does he cut his own grass? I think I have a just fucking... The, the, the existentialist turtle. <laughs> Look at this turtle. Yeah. Is it black shell, black lips, and a little black patch on his head? Yeah, that's true. It's true. Like it looks blacker in person too, because of just through the glass. I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, I I I thoroughly enjoy my time. At That's awesome. Some sharks. Yeah, yeah. I've 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 like because the kids some I've had frogs because the kids I've had to go so regularly over the really? years. That, like, I haven't been for years. Right. So like it's probably cool for you, but like for me, I'm like <laughs> blowing my fucking brains out. Like it's like again. You know, just I mean, that's why we d- we didn't go to like a natural history museum. Like, I'm sure they've changed stuff, but I've gone so much when I was younger. Yeah, the, their dinosaur shit mm-hmm. is completely new. It's like it's they gutted it and completely. Okay, so it. I'm I'm I want to go because I used to go like a couple times a year. And there's a bunch of cool shit down there, man. Like you know, we did like the spy museum, yeah. shit, there's and art museum, art museums and shit. Like there's a bunch of and cool they're all shit. free. Yeah, versus you know aquarium, but like I assume they need upkeep. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Yeah, of it's a lot. It's a that's lot. That's a lot of fucking water. Bro. They used to do like seal shows and shit outside. They don't do shows anymore. <laughs> I thought of dolphins. What about yeah. you? Ever thought about going out in the dragon boats? Well, I was down. Oh, I was down oh, there. The, yeah, the dragon, the paddle boats. Yeah. Like dragons. So, so when oh, I, a New Year's. I, when I was down there, we went out to eat, and we were at uh, Cheesecake Factory, and they had some fish, fresh fish of the day, and we're like, I wonder if they caught them in the dragon boat. <laughs> Just paddled those out there and caught whatever. Fed, Did you fresher. guys eat down there? Uh, no, I ended up eating at the Cheesecake Factory <laughs> and weird. Columbia Mall, though. Oh, Columbia Mall, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure where to go at the time, like, oh, in Baltimore. There's tons of places, I know, but it was just like, I didn't I want to use the brain power to think about it. Yeah. And then went to Columbia Mall and hung out there for like two, three hours. Just took a lap. Yeah, it's a big mall. Place. Yeah, it's... Changed it's drastically. Changed. Like, I just, like, keep thinking, like, where the stores used to be. And they got this whole, like, hole outside. It's huge. The outside is yeah. as big as the inside. Yeah. But, yeah, it's had... Cheesecake Factory had I three cheesecakes. Yes, it's, I fucking I fucking love Cheesecake Factory. Mm. And um, but yeah, so it was a whole day. So we got back at like six or seven. So it was a whole day outing. We haven't done that in a long time. Nice, that's I'm awesome. Sorry. Uh, fucking game wise, uh, played Devour. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I talked about this last week even maybe, but it's like a four player co op game. You did say a bunch of new co op games that you've been playing last week. I don't remember all the names, yeah. but it was like a. The, the Devourer had dropped a new map and I played it. It's really fucking hard. We tried it for like five hours, couldn't beat it yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're going to try again maybe this week. And of course, uh, Mon- Monster Hunter. Dude, uh, what about this? I'm hearing the, the, the final Pokemon episode or whatever. Like the. I'm seeing it like it's like a viral thing. Like, I don't know if you know anything about it. Like the, the Ash and Pikachu are like retiring like it's like the final season oh it's about time I don't know um, isn't he finally like a fucking champ as well, I mean he's now? been did he finally collect them all he was after like fucking 30 years 7 years old when it started and they've cycled through so many different I, I don't there's different versions I, of him too it's just yeah like, I don't this I don't is like know. the it's classic like it's the it happened just like this this past week oh, okay uh, I'm I, a Digimon guy I have some huge huge Pokemon people in my house and I heard nothing about it yeah it's a thing it's a thing ask him I'm interested it's just to know What's going on? And it's okay. like supposedly, right. it's supposedly it was like it was like it, it wasn't a big to do, like it wasn't like a big like over the top episode. It was just kind of subtle and maybe that's why kind of beautiful in its own way. They say and like, but like you know, like a, a quiet, humble exit. You know, I like that. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I'll be collect them all though, because that'd be kind of a bummer if he didn't. Uh, so like, I don't know. They say something like he like they like 
they saw a lot of the characters like in the final, like just like in random spots and stuff. Like it was, oh, it was like a real like love letter to the whole thing, like a, a graceful bow out. Well, when he was trying to catch them all, there was like a hundred Pokemon, yeah. and now there's like eight hundred. <clears throat> yeah, let me see if I can uh, just put, uh, find that. The, like his parents finally, I don't know. It's just weird. You send your seven-year-old out by himself with a, his pet dog to fight other dogs. So Ash and Pikachu's last episode in the Pokemon series brings up all the feels. Ash so catch there's him, no more Ash and Pikachu. From two, now on. two characters Supposedly. who have been at the heart of the series retired as the protagonist on Friday. Their final episode was relatively quiet. Nothing too flashy happened, but it was meaningful. The story ended with his where his journey began in Pallet Town and incorporated several callbacks to the series' early episodes. The journey spanned multiple shows and movies. In November, he won the Pokemon World Coronation Series and became one of the best trainers in the world of Pokemon. Finally, after the... Okay. That, However, that's why I was going to say... In December, the Pokemon Company International said that the two would be concluding their run with this series, and two new trainers named Liko and Roy would take the mantle as the stars of the series. Before Ash and Pikachu left, though, they would get a rundown of special episodes that reunited Ash with old friends in Pokemon. That's cool. The last episode starring uh, the two aired in Japan on Friday. Uh, Friday, oddly, it, um, uh, it seemed almost... It, oddly, it seemed almost for a final episode, but it did make numerous references to the first episode, according to the plot synopsis. We won't go into details, um, but some moments stood out because of their connection to earlier episodes. Similar to the very first episode, Ash also sleeps in after spending the night in his mom's house and hurries off to Professor Oak's lab in this one. And they kind of give a synopsis, even though they say they're not going to. <laughs> um, the funny thing about it to me, Bobby, is that you have any fucking idea what any of that is. The, at, well, at, you live in this house. At, well, the, at the end, the to the two then see a rainbow a reference to seeing ho o in the first episode oh. and they decide to uh, set upon a new adventure and run towards the horizon um so here's a here's a so, conversation i just had i didn't get it from this house it's just been all over I the news feeds and shit. like it's just been a, a big uh, deal not mine apparently so i asked mason said did they retire ash from pokemon he said yes and i said is that a big deal and in Mason, perfect typing here. Well, he's been the protagonist of the anime for the past 25 years, so I'd say so. Uh, I said, is Pikachu retired also? He said, that specific one, yeah. Yeah, but, but that's like a million like, Pikachu's out there. Yeah, like, you can't, you know, retire all the deer or whatever. But right. It's still... Interesting. And I assume the new protagonists are going to be like kids, too. Yeah. So anyway, that was something that hit my newsfeed. It, it, maybe forty-year-old dudes with beards that run around with their phone that in makes, parks. I mean, that children. makes more sense. I mean, like, how old like, is how old is Charlie? Charlie just turned ten. Can you like imagine giving him butters and be like, go out into the world with butters and fight other cats and be the oh bad God. cat fighter out butters there? Butters just take three steps and then lay down beside him. <laughs> but I mean, that's the premise of the show. I know. Yeah. You and take you and two friends and their cats and go fight other Let's cats. Let's go. We just need one more friend with cats, and we can go. I've got, well, I'll need a, can we get cats that can carry butters? Like, we'll make them a little uh, wagon? I don't know if any other cat can carry butters, no, You have bro. to carry them around in a giant ball. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they have those backpacks. Yeah, that the, cats the bubbles. Can, yeah. But I need an extra, extra large one for butters. Yeah, so it would be like that Pokeball. Yeah. Your butters lost weight. He lost five pounds. He's That's a lot. He's Yeah, he's like 32 pounds now. He was forty six. Good for him, and, man. And no, he was he was thirty six, thirty seven. Anyways, and Kit Kat weighs twenty one pounds. Yeah, but, he has noticeably but, big, but, but he's he's, much he's yeah, but like him against your cats is huge. But next to Butter, he just looks like a normal cat. I forget how small. No, cats he's are. definitely noticeably bigger than than Kit Kat. No butters is no. I'm saying that. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. But he's Kit saying. Kat to me doesn't looks appear. Like a, uh, looks like a regular until, cat because I no, like forget what size cats are until <laughs> <laughs> like I see your cats. I'm like, oh, oh. I, I watched the though. Minds of Cats uh, documentary. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I, but I like it. Just just for watching footage of cats, I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what? yeah, it's interesting. There's all these Japanese cat scientists. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. There's cats over there, man. I like cats. I guess cats are popular there because having a dog barking in an apartment would definitely be a also size and space. Right, right, right. Yeah, I did. I did see dogs, people walking dogs over there, but it was very, very rare hmm. sight. But cat cafes, weird, and owl cafes, <laughs> pig cafes everywhere. Just people licking their lips. <laughs> I don't think that's the right country, bro. Wow, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, people eat that. Yeah, I know they do. <laughs> I don't think they are in Japan. People, people eat that. I don't think Japan is the spot <laughs> and, where it's and, happening. Yeah, I don't know if they have a history of it. China definitely do, and some villages are still like, don't tell us what not to eat. <laughs> they just, yeah, yeah, still yeah. love eating their fucking dogs. Yeah, facts. Yep. And then Monster Hunter finally got the quote-unquote end game. We beat like 
Well, our group beat the oh final. God, was it a time travel mission? Because I can't handle it. Mm, no. <laughs> Do you have to go back and fix something you did in the no. last no. In, in no. game? Nope. Nope. You, you just now hunt forever. We've beat this story, but now, like, you just keep hunting for no particular reason. Things get stronger, and then you get hunting. There's no story to it, but just stronger and stronger monsters come out of the woodworks that you level up. And At some point in time, will they put a DLC in there of some the other DLCs, mission? They put DLCs in with more monsters and more okay. gear. But no story. Gotcha. And then we're going to keep doing that until 6 comes out. That's how we play Monster. I beat a game, too. I beat Last of Us. Did you? I'm still no. stuck in that. I'm still stuck in the same spot. area? Dude, I just... Are I, you I, kidding me? I tried it three or four times, and I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like this. So did, I went, I you went back in Cyberpunk and just shot people in the head and ran from the cops. <laughs> Go back. Because I know how to do <laughs> that, it. That it's sounds fun. like some boomer shit right there. <laughs> um, so I will say, like... Uh, I think... Because, you know, I'm comparing the two experiences. Yeah. Um the shootout at the hospital mm-hmm. far more dramatic and cinematic in the film i would assume than or in the show a, than, than, about like to the than, end yeah, yeah like it's far more like edge of your seat the shit um but i would imagine you know and i have to imagine because i watched the show first but shooting the doctor mm-hmm. Is a more dramatic thing playing it for the first time. Yeah, and, and you know, realizing but, you have to make that choice. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Well, and that is the outcome. Yeah, <laughs> like you like like this the place you're trying to get to the whole fucking time, and you got there, and then yeah, this is what's waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting because yeah, I think it's about the choice and experience more than like the action aspect of it. They're very. I mean, they're identical. Like you talk about something being true to something. Mm-hmm. It, that's what I've heard. It's, it's probably the truest thing I've ever seen translated from one thing to another ever. And and it's great. So why don't they fucking do that? I agree. No, but, well, I, so I so you know, but you, so you know the, how Hollywood the source is. Material has to be great. You know how Hollywood is. Now they might because it's been proven to work once. Has there yeah. has there not been a case of something adapted from? No, but you know how they. No, like, the, like well, the fucking, so yeah, so like Batman, like eighty nine Batman, is like you know far left of of center, and then they're like, oh, well, that's the key. Just do your own thing with these characters, you know what I mean? And then something else happens, and you know, and they like uh, with video games. I'm sure that anytime that any one of them has had any kind of success, like it has, Honor? it's been a, a. I haven't watched it yet. I'm gonna. It's been a you know a left turn from the source material, Resident and then Evil. they think to themselves like, oh, well, this is what the key is, you know. But hopefully, but like, maybe this will set a new trend. But like, no, they they did the same show with The Witcher. It was they did season one, which was really true to source material, really well liked, and then they mm-hmm. fucking took a left turn for no reason. And I actually read an article. I don't know if it's in the notes, and, but I read an article about that. That apparently Henry Cavill was all about the source material yes. until he wasn't, and then he was very adamant about the direction it went, and that's why. Was he? I have no idea. I read it that it was they, the other way around. Yeah, that it was the other way around. That, well, I read the headline that seemed to be that way, and then I read the. I'm serious. Gotcha. I read the article, and it was like, oh, he's the one deviating from the. Oh, story. really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that, <laughs> just stick. If the source material is so good that you want to adapt it, just fucking adapt it. Like same with book stuff, right? Yeah. There's pl- plenty of movies based out on books, and I think the ones true to the books that do well in general. I would think. Yeah, yeah I don't. I mean, I, I think Harry Potter. We, yeah, well, I, saw, I don't even know. Got, the, yeah. I think the difference Four is rings. I think the difference is there's got to be yeah. pe- there has to be someone else's imagination involved because it's you know as as, as great as even Tolkien and, and yeah, it has to be reformatted. It, it has you know it, the detail they go to describe the rock face or whatever they right. they've still got to put some imagination in there to make the dwarf mind look like that or whatever. Right. Yeah, but but I think to Bobby's point, you've already got the visual uh, presentation here. Just film this in in real life instead of you know animated. So hopefully we get we, yeah, hopefully we get more of that mm-hmm. instead of like Street Fighter the movie, <laughs> both of them. But yeah, it was good. But the Street Fighter first movie was good. Mortal Kombat the first one was pretty good. I think that's closer to the source material probably. <laughs> yeah. Annihilation not for tell, better or worse. How do you tell that story? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. Yeah, I think no, the game isn't isn't like there's a linear story there. Yeah, I think you have to tell it almost like character to character. You know, like you. They can't. were doing that in the YouTube like shorts. Yes, I mean like was great. Yeah, and that was that was actually pretty pretty decent. Like Ghost of Tsushima, that would be. a Yes, I think they are so. actually. Uh, actually, they are. Chad, yeah, the Chad, still, whatever the guy does, the John Wick movies is is doing it. Oh, great! So that should be. I, I don't know how accurate it'll be to the source material, but um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. Yeah. So, oh, there is a fucking uh, Saint Say a live action coming out. It looks fucking awful. No oh, boy, I'm so fucking mad about it. 
it looks fu- at least look fucking cool, right? At least look like this because the source material looks fucking cool. It does. Are they making it domestically or is it made? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, all I know about I, it is the I, cool I, shiny figures. Is it, are the suits not shiny or they're not shiny and they don't look like that? Okay, then they look like trash. <sighs> wow. That's awful. All right. Yeah. So like at, at least look good, right? Yeah, bare like, minimum. But talking about look, looking the part, I'm just continuing to work on the cosplay. Okay. I'm still working on the mask because like, I want to make this mask like, perfect. So I'm like s- sculpting foam putty yeah. onto the foam. That stuff's cool. I'd never mess with it till the kids were doing their costumes. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah that's I didn't so know sweet. that existed until like, I started working on this. And like, as, apparently it came out a few years ago, but that was already pa- like after I like kind of tapered off of making armor and stuff. But it's fucking great. To explain this to you, Bobby, it's um, like those foam... You know the the foam you'd make like a costume out of, not the foam we use for dioramas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like gym mats type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they make a f- putty that is it's basically the same material when it dries, but you can mold it and sculpt it and fill it's, in. You lines. can sand it really good. That's the problem. yeah, yeah. And so, you can just add water and turn it into paste to fill. I've seams. tried to figure Before out a way to have, use it for dioramas. I haven't come mm-hmm. up with anything yet. Before you just have like use caulk and stuff. Caulk. Caulk. Let's some caulk. Do, do your best and caulk the rest. Jesus Christ. <laughs> On a cracker. <laughs> but yeah, so I told you that, that my buddy of mine saw that roof that was all fucked up that somebody had tried to repair themselves. And it was like, I didn't tell you this. Mm, I don't think so. They we're driving through like this trailer park. Long story how we got there, but we're driving through this trailer park and where this uh this these guys obviously put a new roof on it and mm-hmm. their roof met the baseboard of the house. It was like you could tell they tried to fill it in and it just looked like I mean it looked like it's like a kid's paper mache project. <laughs> oh. and, and my buddy caught it and he was just like, Do your best and caulk the rest. Oh. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's pretty good pretty good advice. I started watching this YouTube channel, it's called Just Rolled In and it's mechanics and in these things they find and like like the state of some of these cars, like the the frame of the car had started to rust away, and they had just been welding. Like there was a wrench in there and a, a pry bar, just any sort of metal they could find. They were welding in there. Mm. That it's, it it's horrifying. That these cars are on the road. It, it works. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully, it's steel, right? Maybe. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So I'm I'm enjoying the process. That was slow going. Like I have I've been having a hard time getting up one time. So like. Uh, my days off, I I don't like get to roll out of bed till like eleven sometimes, and by like the time chores and shit is done, I only get maybe like two three hours of work working on stuff, and I'm slow, so I only get two three hours of working on stuff before like you know evening time. Right. Yeah. But I'm trying to get better about that. Um, and that's my nerve week. This a, a topic of discussion. We we can talk about it later. Some shit that's something on my mind. All right. All right. Let me do mine and then uh, we'll do your topic discussion. I like oh, that. L- loop back to mine real quick. I, I um I had to spend a lot of money this week. Uh, oh. I had to buy tires for the older vehicle. And uh, that was one of those conversations. Are we going to keep this? Because we're going to invest some money in it. So we decided, yes, we're going to keep it. We get Tires and brakes. Oh. Yeah. it's It was a lot more money than I wanted to spend. They fuck you at the dealerships. They yeah. fuck you. You know, the, uh, yeah. lethal weapon. Yeah. It depends on, depends on how much kind of tires. You can pay $150 oh, I, I got tire, to, I, I mean, or you I can pay $600 a tire. I, I mean, that's that is one dilemma. I'm like, I don't want to spend. So I got some Chinese-made tires of a yeah. company I've never heard of. But they hold air in their round. Yeah. Did I talk about the whale last week? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, then I only have one other thing to really bring up for my Nerd Week, and that is... Actually, t- I have a couple of stories, but one was uh, I watched... Or I said no man alone in a bat batch this week. Oh, it hasn't come out yet. Hasn't yeah, because we're so recording. Sorry, it's going to be like two weeks late for everybody. Um, Elvis, I watched. I started watching Elvis. I, I oh. haven't finished it yet. Yeah, I How fell asleep. What do you think about it? So actually, it was pretty good so far. I'll tell you what my concern was. My concern was was it was going to be because I'm not the biggest Elvis fan in the world. His, his music is just not necessarily for me. I don't think it's just it's just too far removed from my generation. Right. Um, I think my appreciation for music can stretch back to the late 60s and that's when it starts to lose me anything okay. before that not that I don't like a few songs Johnny Be Good or you know whatever the fuck but like Chantilly <clears throat> Lace yeah that one I'm not sure is one but like oh. in, in general right um but I was concerned that it because I what I do know about him was that he was like heavily influenced by black music at the time, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, black American mm-hmm. music, like the, this blues rock sort of blend that Memphis was like sound, coming yeah. out of the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that some people try to paint him as though he was like this thief. 
Right. Right. And that was not the case. He right. was just like, he was just in love with the music and it influenced him. And uh, so I was worried they were going to paint him out to be this fucking monster um, in regard to like, you know, like, you know, in, like intellectual property, for lack of a better term, you know. Um, and they didn't. They really painted it as like a guy that was like kind of like obsessed with that culture, like whether it be the church mm -hmm. or the, the the blues kind of uh, clubs or whatever the case may be. Like, I think they did a good job of showing like like where his inspirations came from, but that he was not like a you know to quote the the term like a culture vulture. Like he was like yeah. he, he was in love with that shit. Right, like he lived and breathed it. So I, that was nice to see. It wasn't just for like. To, to just the, for the cash money. grab, yeah. Did they show the part that's where what Colonel Tom Parker was there for? Was the cash grab? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how far. I, I don't. I'll yes. let you finish watching it. We'll discuss further next yeah. week. But did they, did they show the part where he was inspired his dance move by this like crippled kid? <laughs> <laughs> then he started shaking his hips. Uh, no, but it is funny to see how like these women lost their goddamn mind when he started doing that shit. Like, you know, like uh, dude, I wish I had that sort. You know what I mean? Just come out like hit a little. So, you know what I mean? People just pass the fuck out. Like, my parents, um, my parents went and saw Elvis, and I think I was born. Um, it was late later in his career. Fat Elvis? Um, I think it, it was because that's a whole vibe. It, it, it was it was jumpsuit Elvis with a white, with sure. white suit, yeah. but, and the sideburns, the sunglasses. My, my dad always said um, he's like dressed like Evil Knievel. <laughs> yes, to, yes. To, to prevent people like rioting to get to him. Uh huh. They after he was done, he did his encore. They cut the house lights for like a couple minutes, and then said, "Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the auditorium." Right, and then turned them on to let people go because they it, it had just gotten so out of hand over the years of people like rushing to, you know, tackle him and just touch him. And I do love all that. Like, Elvis has left the building <clears throat> thing, huh? Yeah, I do. All, yeah, yeah, Elvis I do love all that like star power shit. Like, you know, and like. You would see like Michael Jackson like step on stage and like the whole first row just passes out, like <laughs> fucking faints. You know what I mean? Like it's like that sort of like power. You know, is a uh, they're all plants. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, industry plants. Well, that's house, I guess, house plants. <laughs> yeah, that's what I guess that they were. I was uh, hoping they weren't going to make Elvis into it was like some sort of industry plant because mm -hmm. that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't, so I was I was happy to see that. And I'm not finished it yet, so I, I could hate it. But um, you know, give it time. I don't think you will. Give, if, it, if, give, I, it, give it anything time long enough. Bobby, Bobby can hate it. I, I figured you wouldn't like it because of the stylistic nature of the. And the it is a music. lot of quick cuts. Um, it's that Baz Yerman style. He did a Moulin Rouge and okay. Uh, I, I didn't see Moulin Rouge. I'm not a big really? musical person. Well, I'm not either. Yeah, I'm surprised. Except for the Strike music, it was great. Yeah, but um. But yeah, uh, and the only got, I got a couple stories. So, um, Selena accused Leia of sneaking food into her room or something, right? Because um, she Snitching. found, yeah, but yeah, well, she found some evidence that suggested it. And Leia was like, "I know, I, I didn't. I swear, I did." Like, like, but you could see in her face that she was telling the truth. You know what I mean? It was like sincere. And Selena was like, "Yes, you did. You know, you did. Like, I did. I, sw I swear. I swear. I didn't. I, I wouldn't. I, I, like, I don't. I don't do that." And they were like, "Mm hmm." And she was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, she was like getting right super defensive about it. And Selena keeps pushing it. And then finally, uh, Leia said, you know what? You can think whatever you want. Santa knows the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. That's great. Um, and then the other night we uh, we were sitting around the dinner table. And, you know, like my kids have like an interesting life. Right. As far as like child care. So, like, they have what we call daddy days. Mm -hmm. They have mommy days. They have daddy mommy days and they have grammy days mm -hmm. you know and they kind of don't know which end is up you know they're they'll, they'll constantly ask like is tomorrow mommy day or a daddy day or you know whatever yeah because it's a rotating yeah. schedule yeah so we like went around in a circle with them and like at the table you know and like said like what's your least favorite things about each day and your favorite things about each day and then what's your favorite day and what's your least favorite day that's rough yeah, scary, scary yeah. Stuff, bro. <laughs> check, you gotta check your feelings at the door you know what i mean but uh, it was, uh I, so i was i was one person's least favorite day uh and it was the babies wow but, yeah yeah she was like daddy days are the worst and i was like damn wow yeah you too brute um mm -hmm. and uh i don't think i was anybody's favorite day which is fine I'm okay with being average. Um, as long as you're not failing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think if I think I was number two for a lot of people's. Uh, Jana was like, "What I like about Daddy Day is he gives he gives you his, your space." 
<laughs> Which was pretty funny. So what uh, discussion topic did you have? Okay, so I don't know. I've been, you know, I've been in kind of a weird spot lately. So I've been thinking about the nature of uh, relationship, of friendships, uh, relationships in general, not necessarily romantic. Mm-hmm. And this, been, this is my bag, so let's do it. a hard time of like... So when we're young, younger at least, like best friends is a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like we still might have a best friend in mind and you might say it, but I just come to think it's like f- friends in general mm-hmm. aren't necessarily the people or the relationship are not necessarily what you think it is because it, mm-hmm. it takes two or multiple, right? To make a relationship. So I stopped questioning, not in a negative way, right. not, not like suspicious. Right. And like, because I'm starting to, get a lot of cues that people don't see me the way I think they see me, hmm. whether it's closer or further, right? Right. Some people I might think, oh, I'm just their acquaintance and they think we're really close friends. Right. Or someone I think is really close, they they might not think I'm that close. Uh-huh. So like it, it, it fucks me up a bit because I don't have too many, too many relationships in my life anyway. Yeah. So like I start to like think about the people in my life and like what I mean to them. I'm struggling because like you can't tell right or you can't ask majority unless you're really close you can't really ask these questions either like how how, how close am I to you like you like you asking your kids whose favorite day is it right like, <laughs> right, like right, right. what like rank me <laughs> yeah. amongst your list yeah. of friends <laughs> who's your favorite friend who's your favorite yeah. friend right <laughs> so <laughs> and you also seem like such a bitch when you talk exactly, like that you know what I mean exactly like, right and it shouldn't matter, but like, but it, it does. I, it does matter. It matters to me because of emotions. I'm an emotional person. I admit it, right? Mm-hmm. And also, like, it, it, I should check my expectations. Mm. That's 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 a thing that I need to do. I usually try to expect less of people anyway, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. like because I don't like to put myself on them, so to speak, and I don't like to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. So I don't expect too much from people. I don't ask too much from people. But it's still like it should dictate how I treat them, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm giving them the world and they're not, mm-hmm. like I should stop giving them the world, mm-hmm. right? It's a give and take, right? It's a it's in, in the, the that's actually something I learned in therapy. Like um, I'm in therapy, bro, for my my six sessions. Like I, I did six sessions. I, I'm open about it um, at the request of my wife. And one thing she taught me was that like every relationship, whether it's your kids, your parents. Friends, coworkers, every relationship, uh, customer, store, yeah. like every relationship, every, every is, relationship. is based on a, a balance of give and take. Mm-hmm. And once that balance has been established, any upsetting of that balance becomes problematic for either party, whether it's justified or not. So if I, if you and I, Chris, go out to dinner or go out to lunch after mm-hmm. every Nerve Rage episode, it's just, it's a thing that started and we just established this trend and we always do it every episode and I pay. I just, I've always paid and at first you thought weird about it, but then now you just accept it. It's just become a thing. And then one day I'm like, hey man, would you mind picking this one up? It can fuck up the balance. Even though it's a fair request because I've been paying for it mm. the whole time, it's not an established dynamic of our relationship. Right. So it can fuck up the balance. Right. The, and the other thing that uh, it seems like I might have mentioned this before, like, so, so we'll give you an example. Charlie was calling this other kid, uh, his best friend. Mm-hmm. Right. And you were worried and, when they and got together. They were going to, a, he was going to a birthday party, this kid's birthday party. And I said to Kelly, I said, you might hang around a minute to make sure. Cause just cause Charlie thinks it's his best friend. It could just be some dude that this guy knows. Right. And it was this a, did you have to invite the whole class kind of break? Correct. They get there and they hit it right. Ke- yeah. Kelly meets the. Pe- oh, this is Charlie. We hear so Ta- much about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. it was all good, but we were like, oh, because it's just so heartbreaking. Yeah, you it, know, it is. And unless I'm just wondering if this case that is not that is accepted. Like, like I say, somebody's my best friend, knowing that I'm not their best friend. Right? Yeah, like it can can that be okay? I think it can be. Yeah. Because it's the way you you view that person and and also the definitions, right? Mm-hmm. Because like what a best friend means to you, it may not right. mean to me. Right. Right. Or to you. Mm-hmm. That we could all have different sort of ideas of what a best friend Or friends in general. Because like I I I, it's, I know it. I find it weird in a conversation when I hesitate to say the word friends a lot. Because I think people use that word too easily. And I maybe, agree. maybe I use that word too hard. Because I, I, I call a lot of people acquaintances, but I don't want to offend people. Correct. So my buddy, my friend, even in my, my head, I'm like, not really. I would never call you for anything. Yeah, I'll be you honest. Know? Like, I don't know 
like, uh, you know, and, and, you know, just all cars on the table like after the Adam shit. I don't know if I have any best friends anymore as how I've always defined it. Right. You know, I have, a, I have things change. I have close friends. Yes. And they're pretty much I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, like, they're pretty much you two, Jisk and Robert, my shift, which is a revolving door because mm-hmm. if my shift changes, the dynamics of those friendships change. And that can change the whole dynamic of the whole set. right? 100 yep. uh, percent. Gary, angry Gary. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, so, uh, Casey is becoming a close friend. Like, like we are becoming that. And then, um, <clears throat> I went, oh, and then my buddy Charlie, who I always say has the most fucked up sense of humor that I've, I've ever experienced in the in the world. But like, I think that's part of it is is realizing where the relationship goes after the convenience or ritual or routine of the established relationship has ended. So, case in point, my shift, we work together when we work together, right? We work together every day. We're right with each other every day. Then somebody leaves the shift and goes to a different shift or retires or gets fired or whatever the case may be, right? Or quits. Do I stay in touch with this person after those dynamics change? And, and if I do, how, it's hard, and for it's how hard long? man. It gets, it gets it becomes either awkward or just unnatural at points. So, right. so if that person stays in your in your field in your industry, I think you're going to talk to them more because you have that common bond. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. I used to like my I call him my work buddy. Um, we worked together. The, the guy who moved to he moved up to Maine uh, from Tennessee for the position I have up there. His wife's family, blah blah blah. We used to talk literally three, four times a day. Mm-hmm. Most of the time it was like, hey, do you know how to do this or do you know this? It was a lot of work, but then that would just wander into a 10-minute conversation about <clears throat> whatever. He's taking another job, and we talk once or twice a week. Just because yeah. there's not the meat's not there like it was. But you still talk. We them. still talk. Yeah. It's just the frequency. Yeah, and but I think that still counts still, as something. Yeah. It that's does. A, that's a, I mean, to me, that's a lot. To yeah. Talk, talk, to talk to a, a, a person who is very far away once or twice a week, every week, it's a lot to me. Yeah, that, that, okay. that's a that's a commitment to me, right? You know, like uh, like so, you know, Charlie used to work with me, for instance. He doesn't work with me anymore, but he, you know, will text somewhat regularly. It might it might be once or twice, might be less, mm-hmm. but the bond stays there for whatever yeah. reason. Like, but sometimes it doesn't, right? And if like uh, you know, if if nerve rage ends today, where our relationships goes from that, it it is like. Okay, well, what is it then? Right, you know, and and like that's that's a real thing to consider, like, um, because it doesn't always go the way you think it goes. Yep, you know, and it's like life gets in the way, and then before you know it, you become accustomed to a different, a different way of life, and then the next thing you know, when it's like, hey, you want to guys get together for dinner? It's like, oh, that seems weird. Uh, I yeah. guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to fuck yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Right? I, yeah, I wonder, like, because it's one of those things you won't know till unless it happens. Right. right. I mean, a bit different. Well, I think me living three doors down is different than me moving that's half an hour. Very I true. love that's that very band. True. Is that why you move three doors down? <laughs> if I go crazy. You, yeah. you, can, you can say it's his kryptonite. <laughs> oh, wow. This guy. Name any other song of theirs. Um, so Loser. I, uh, there's, that's wh- not them. What's the uh, song that they did? I'm pretty sure that's a, They have a song called Loser? I think so. They have a song. Not the Beck one. <laughs> um, no, no. It's a different one. Uh, they have a song that I do Maybe. like. I, I can't call it, but it was like uh, the the video was about like veterans or something. Which it's, Hold me when I'm here. Yeah, love yeah, me yeah, when I'm yeah, gone. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. Yeah. It's too much, but I do That's like it. That's like the only other like mainstream hit. <laughs> yeah. But living three doors down, I think that is a different dynamic. One hundred percent. Me living, God forbid, ten minutes, minutes down the away. road. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it, but it is. It does change it, the dynamic. Barriers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I think like, you know. Okay. Yep. You're right. <laughs> You Thank go. you. Thank you for taking me back to that time period in my head now. Holy shit. You're welcome. But what I find oh, interesting. I'm lost. You know, in like <laughs> in, the woods. In, in my modern life, like, and I, I may have forgotten one or two people in the, my club. I'm doing this all the top of my head, right? Of, yeah. like, Sorry, like, everybody. That yeah, feels like you exactly, got left out. Exactly. Uh, of, like, if you're part of the cool table, then you're Bobby's <laughs> best friend. <laughs> of like close friends, right? Yeah. And then I have like an outer ring of like buddies, like cool, cool, uh, cool friends, just some cool <laughs> friends, you know, like, um, you know, and then like everybody else kind of like fits I, into to that and then behind that there's like the friendly associates or yes. friendly acquaintances, acquaintances yeah. you know and then behind that there's acquaintances and then there's fucking strangers and then there's people I'm not sure about people I don't like and then enemies yes you know and um and it's like it, it, but like I think about like the best friend thing often because of the dynamics of my life for the last couple of years and like even out of like you know you six or however many people I named, if I have something that like I'm really struggling with that I'm going through, I'm not calling any of y'all. Mm. I'm just not, and it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with me. 
Oh, I'm the same way. Like, it, I, there's a lot of heavy shit I deal with that I don't want to talk about with it, with you guys at all. Yeah. Just because I, so, I, I feel like I don't, I don't want to burden you with it. And a lot of the time, it's life I, experience shit that you're I, not going to... I don't think you'll have the... You wouldn't have the, the perspective. On. Okay, so I, I... It's funny. Like, I mean, because we... I guess we all have... Th- it's just like a lot. It's just like kinks, right? right. Back in the day, you, did, you, you thought things were kinky until like it's on on the internet, and you realize everyone's into it, mm-hmm. right? And right, right. Like everyone likes to get fucked in the ass, what? apparently, huh? <laughs> oh, because hey, fucking in the ass used to or eating about, ass used okay. to be a, a rare thing, right? But now everyone's eating ass. Pause. Because, pause. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. As soon as I saw those awards in her fucking desk, I said, those are butt, <laughs> butt plugs. plugs. And yes. lo and behold, yep. that dude fucking runs and squats and lands on that. Yep. That was wild. Sorry, go ahead. But but so, yeah, like, so a lot of these <laughs> thoughts, we all have, the, like, well, like, I don't want to be a burden. It's a heavy one for me because I don't. Like, it's one of those things, like, I've tried to be considerate. I don't want to be burdened. I don't want to talk about my problems or tell people my problems much unless they ask about it or unless I really, really, really trust somebody like, like Krista or... Mm-hmm. But but it's it's not because like if you if you think about it, I don't think it's a burden if you guys came to me with a problem, right? So I have to like talk about relationships. I have to also be able to say, well, if it's not a problem for me for them to come to me, then I have to try to assume that it's not a problem for me to go to them. So right. so one hundred percent. Yeah. So so for me and for me, it's not a burden thing, which I, I also do understand. But like um, like I think. Like, I'd love for any of those people to come at me with their problems. And, like, I would talk, and some of them know that mm-hmm. I would sit and talk to them to the to the fucking cows come home. I'm happy to. Like, I get, because sometimes then that helps me talk about some shit right, in the right. same breath. So, like, I'm happy to do it. I think that my shit comes from, I think it comes from trust. Like, yeah. I, everything, I'm, I like, I've seen, I've seen in a very short amount of time like my most intimate details get weaponized against me. Mm. So now I'm like, man, like, uh, like it doesn't matter how I feel about you today or you today. It's how I feel about you tomorrow. And then yeah. what do you do with that information? I don't know anymore. Yeah. I mean, like you just, to, to me, it's like, you got to know the person, right? Even to think they're like a good person, right? Mm-hmm. To, to say, well, I, I know that the kind of person, even if we had a falling out, they are not the kind of person who would ever, like leak my secrets or right. or shit on me, right. right? Like we can fall, fall have a fallout, and I don't have to worry about that. I, I mean, I'm honest. I, I ran to you recently for some my my fucking problems, which and I like, and and I had a blast, yeah. like talking about it, yeah. like a, and, a complete and blast. You don't, yeah, I don't talk to like no offense to you, like it's not, th- but like I I I trust you with this information that I wouldn't trust anybody else other than Krista with, correct? And we talked about it, and like. And you were very understanding. And like you said, a lot of things, I, I, this problem I have, I don't think people will understand. But, you know, apparently Bobby does. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, maybe people can understand if you just fucking talk to them. Yeah. You, you, like, assume people don't have life experiences or feelings that you do. But we all fucking human. 100%. Especially at 40 plus. We've gone through and done and seen and known a lot of people and things. That's what I think that, that kink conversation really ties into. Where, like, you know, like, you, you, you're embarrassed about something or you feel shameful about something. So you don't talk about it. Right. And then all of a sudden you find out the next person does it. And now you feel comfortable talking about it. Yes. Right. Like it was even like, you know, in my younger days, like even just talking about like I shaved my nuts and shit. Like I didn't like it was embarrassing. I didn't want to say tell anybody that. And then like when people start opening up about it or making jokes about it, then you feel comfortable talking about yes, it. And then it becomes normalized. Okay. So right? you're not like, I'm, not, I'm not the only one. I'm not going to shout them for being the Correct. only fucking weirdo out there. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like and, and it does. It, it's about, you know, comfort because it is. Anytime you open up, it's you're vulnerable, right? Like yes, you know you're. It depends letting, on what it is. It's very vulnerable. You're letting the armor down. But I also think. Like, I mean, are you literally talking about shaving your balls right now? Or are you using a metaphor? <laughs> a metaphor. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, but anytime that like you know like and like sometimes like the only person that I really like the burden thing comes into play with me is Laura. Like yeah. I hate having the, like because she has to catch the brunt of it. I, I hate the same thing about Krista. I hate, <laughs> I hate making her feel like I'm, and she doesn't. I don't think. Yeah. But I hate making her feel like I'm burdening burdening her with it. Yeah, because you, yeah, Krista always has to live with me, live with my like already day to day issues. My you know not always the best mental health, and then like I don't want to fucking add more shit to her plate that she already has to fucking live with me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but like um, and the, uh, to be honest, though, I didn't. I would talk to you about things, Chris, but like I don't think. In my mind, just being, just, we're talking, putting everything out there. Like, I don't think you would be interested and or you're not that 
person because you don't talk about your issues, right? So in mm. my mind, well, he doesn't talk about issues. Maybe he doesn't like to talk about issues. There's no reason why I would, you know, come to him to like drop my issues onto him. But where Bobby, I feel, is a, a lot more open in general talking yeah, about personal no issues. Yeah, no doubt. Talk about issues. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, that's, that is, that, like, it's a whole topic in there, right? Of, of like we, every friend has a, a te- not a job sounds bad, but there's a, you know, every friend has different dynamics into which you can ask and give different things to. So on Wine and Cheese last month, we had a whole topic on just the idea of oversharing, mm-hmm. you know, and what is, like, like you are a relatively private person, whereas I am, uh, and I know other people that put you to shame, right? Like, they just, they yeah. don't, I don't know anything about their fucking life, whereas I mm-hmm. am, like, op- open book perhaps too much there's only a couple chapters that i try to secure <laughs> yeah you know what i mean same with me and like <laughs> and and so like but i think it's it's like it's a gift and a it's like it's, it's like anything else man it's a gift and a curse to both there's not a right and a wrong like on one hand i think it has helped me you know i don't know the right words to choose but it has helped me acquire the audience that i have because people are attracted to the, the openness the authenticity of it the just like the real rawness of it right where it's like if i whether it's fucking ridiculous and makes people laugh or if it's fucking super vulnerable and makes people feel or whatever the case may be <clears throat> but then it also puts me in a bracket where people think they know me and i that, and I, not, now i'm off balance because i don't know them okay. so i even you know yes for you like <laughs> I don't even know how to say this. I think I, I often think you do overshare. Yeah, I like, but at the same time, you you have an audience mm-hmm. and a lot of rubbernecking. You know, people yeah. going, what's going on over there? Are they gonna wreck? Are they gonna wreck this car again tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, I am more reserved and keep keep a little bit. And I've got I've got stuff. I'm sure from years gone by that. I don't need to put out there, so I don't. And, yeah, you know. And, and I think for me, it's therapy. Like I think. Oh my, no doubt. I, I, I mean, no doubt. My mind. I call this. You know. Yeah. Right. I get a lot session. out of us sitting here talking every week. Yeah, whether, whether venting or just being like talk about stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 fucking. It's, and and I used to think friendship is like how much do you know a person, right? Like, but like, like again, I, I, I know a lot less about you, Pinkerton, than I know than some other people who's been my, who is in, who is in my life. Mm-hmm. But I consider you a better friend. So it's because I have a laser cutter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah, sure. which is broken at the moment. But that's side story. Oh, again, uh, long story. I'll tell it. Okay, <laughs> unrelated. But, but so I don't know where the feelings come from. It's, it's uh, emotions. Are, well, I always know emotions are rela- irrational. And but like late in the last few months, I really it's really hit me how like it, there's no there's no way to reason it like I said I, I find you to be a much better friend or to, a, a closer friend to me than some people I've known for years well I mean part, I, part of it we see each other every week how often do we see anybody else we consider right. to be close yeah, I mean, right. yeah. and it, I think that's why this show works and I've said that before I mean we almost I'll say it to you again anybody that's a new listener we struggled through the pandemic when we, we weren't doing mm-hmm. this in person we don't want to it, was, mic, a, it yeah. was a chore 100% you know, I, I just felt like we were just spinning our wheels, but you know, getting back in front of each other. Yeah, it's magical. <laughs> well, there's like we touch, there, we touch unicorn horns and just you know. Hmm. And the, I think the other thing about like um, that I have found interesting or challenging about defining friendship or understanding friendship um, is, in some ways, I think I've kind of like I've lowered my standard. In general, I like think I, so. Since like I've I, since I've met you like seven, eight years, I've ago. been like, you know what? I'm fine. I'm obviously broken. Everyone else is on the same page, so I'm just going to get on y'all's page. Yeah, and, and like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we're friends. Yeah, sure. See, uh, I, I'm still where we, you know, we were. Uh, me and Johnny. Blah, 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 I'll get back to you with his last name. We're great pals. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But like, um, I think that there's something about like, ex- like, uh, the expectations, right? Um, so like, what does, what does friendship mean to you? What is the expectation of what that relationship means to you? And then what if it's in complete violation of who you are as a person, right? To quote like last week's show with the fucking, um, uh, white elephant or whatever the, the Christmas, oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Christmas yeah. shit, right? So like that could have been an expectation for him that I would do that. Whereas for me, it's in violation of who I am for you to ask me to do that. So now we're at odds. Right. And one person has to give in or it's a stalemate. Right. And I gave in and a stalemate might have been a better choice. Um, but, you know, and, 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 you, and, I, and I don't mean to make it about 
homeboy. I can no, track no, it no, twist no, this no, anyway. Yeah, like, I, I mean, this is my friend. Uh, I mean, that's a personal Christ, experience. Christmas Eve with yes. you. I could I could do the exact same thing, right? Like, it's important for me to spend that night with people that I do love and are, are close to my life. But it's it's a very hard thing for you yeah, to very do. Uncomfortable. So there's like a stalemate there of like, what is all right? So how much of myself do I sacrifice to make another person happy? Yeah. And that's fucking tricky. Yep. Yeah, that that's. Uh, that is part of friendship, like to gauge a friendship. It's part of it's, love. It, yes, it's, it's how much you're willing to give somebody. But to me, it's more than that. I, I instead of judge, because I feel like I'm willing to give a good amount. Depends on who you are to people that more that other people wouldn't. But, but it's, it's more to me, like how much I'm willing to ask of them. So that's what I was just gonna say. It's both. It's how much am I willing to give and how much am I willing to ask. Yeah, like if like the more I can ask of somebody, mm -hmm. the more, more I think I, I'm willing to ask, the closer they are to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm broken down on the side of the road, mm -hmm. like I, I was, mm -hmm. I would, or or Trista got bought too big a cabinet to fit in the fucking car. <laughs> right. I'm 100% okay with asking either one of you. Right. Where yeah. there are other people I know that live close by, I would never fucking ask them. Right. I right, would right. fucking call a tow truck before I ask them. Right. You know. Right, so like, right. how much I'm willing to ask of that person is how close I am to them. 100%. I, I agree. 100%. Fair, fair analysis. I think both are important. You know, the comfort the comfort zone and willingness to ask somebody, and the comfort zone and willingness of giving. And there's not like a there's not like a set there's not like a set in stone line. No, it's like it's, it's, everything is like so case by case and, and, and the circumstances have to dictate the actions. But it's like, you know, in any, in any give and take where those boundaries end up in like in a tug of war that's happening behind the scenes where, where that little ribbon on the rope lands has an impact on, on that moment or, you know, or lasting moments, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, I don't know about you, Pinkett, but like at least for us, I think YouTube, like, because we are, "Quote unquote public figures." Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, like of weird parasocial relationships that we have, like of people who listens and know us, or and even have good, a good amount of contact with us through Instagram, whatever. They mm -hmm. can message. We're open, right? Anyone can message us, and we'll talk. One hundred percent. But uh, I think that becomes weird too, because some people to us will always be audience slash, you know, friendly, but. I think to them it might become more than it is because it's not a real relationship to me a lot of times. I get that too. So like it's, it's yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. I can think of situations yeah. where, where people I, think you're their friend and you're like I, you know, yeah. not an obligation per se. But, but you like, just know a lot of stuff about me. I don't know anything about you. Yeah, and just because I talk back to you all the time yeah. and I'm cool with you doesn't mean like we're close. Like, but it, it doesn't not mean I that don't either. have feelings by saying but, hey, we're not friends. Keep sending me dad jokes, people. <laughs> don't, don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> but it doesn't not mean that either. You know, it's a case by case basis. Yes, like there because be there's definitely people who become friends. Correct. Like they're, and, they're and some people, people, and some people, you just vibe with. Yeah. You, you know, like and um, you know, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to give examples, but like there have been people that like I've never met, mm -hmm. I've never met, but but just through our DM conversation, I know I vibe with this dude. Mm -hmm. You know, like a certain way. Um. But there's also like I'll give an example, right? Of um, there's a guy I know. Um, we'll just call him Jay for short, okay? And this just happened last night, which is why it's it's pertinent. And I I, I think he listens to this from time to time, so I hope he doesn't take any offense to it because I don't mean it in that way. But, it's but not, I don't want anyone to take offense. But like, but when right, they find out when right. they find out you're not their friend, it's like that's what I was talking about. Like, right? Realizing what both ways is. So he often sends me controversial topics that are generally related to the political landscape in some regard. Okay. Right. And he, from my perspective, uh, he, he is not, he leans more to one side than to another where, uh, he sends me these things and I'll look at them or read them or whatever the case may be. If I have time, sometimes I don't, cause I just don't have the time, but if I can, I, I do try. Right. And then I say like, hey, I like that. I'll say like, that's interesting. I dig this and this, but I don't know about this. I'm not feeling this, you know. And yeah. then, and then he'll debate me, and then I debate back a little bit. Like I just give a little pushback, and then he keeps going. And like yesterday, I had I had to stop and be like, look, man, I don't want to debate you. Right. I'm not interested. I don't want to. I have no interest in debating you. In and DMs. you probably are in the middle of something else. You know, he, well that too. But I was Always. like, you know, Always. and then. And then he kind of said, like, well, maybe you're not confident in your position or like something along those lines. And I'm like, I'm like, man, like, that's not what I about. spend so much of my day 
having to defend my point of view Mm -hmm. that I'm fucking exhausted. And the last thing I want to do is defend it when I don't have to, when I'm not in, when I'm not married to it, I'm married to the content I produce. Right. Yeah. I am not married to your Twitter post at all. So I don't want to have to defend my point of view on my time off for lack of a better term. If you ever are in the area and you want to sit down at the table, I'll defend it in person with you. Love to, because that human interaction scratches an itch for me. Mm -hmm. But, and, and he, he responded, uh, he just quoted like the first sentence of the, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I defend my views so much every day. Like, you, you know, and he was like, you know what? I never connected those dots. My bad. Like I get it. Makes perfect sense. And maybe if I'm ever in town, we can, you know, but it was like, Fuck yeah. a reasonable response from a human being of it's, just like of it's just, so unexpected, you know, and something of like where I'm like, man, this could hurt this dude's feelings that this this could ruin the relationship. Theoretically, mm-hmm. a, a, a friendship, lowercase f, for lack of a better term. Right. Yeah. Could ruin it. But because the message was received, you know, with some nuance or some some bit of interpretation of how the other person feels as opposed to maybe just how he felt at the time, he was able to respond in a very mature way that like changed the dynamics of, of our conversation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, communicate lack of communication, I think is, I have found again within a few recent months that like is, is an issue, not just miscommunication, just a lack of communications. A lot of times due to like being too, uh, Considerate, mm-hmm. like, like not putting things out there because you you might not want to hurt a friendship, you might not want to hurt someone's feeling, but like it doesn't help. Yeah, uh, that's or, crazy. A, a lot of times it makes it worse, and it's tricky, right? Like, like because because uh, I try to say if if what I have to say honestly without um, malice, mm-hmm. just putting like you this like this is how I feel, mm-hmm. and not not being mean. Like I, this is how I feel about the situation, and if someone can't take that. And at least respect it and ruins a relationship. Maybe that relationship wasn't worthwhile to begin with. Mm, right. So I have to be willing to accept the loss, the possible loss of a relationship by putting whatever out there. And I think I, I need to do that. Yeah, that's fair. All people should should be willing to do that, right? Just cut, in general. Yeah, cut the chaff because yeah. Yeah, you you find out you find out real quick how close your relationship is if by how fragile it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, like, if, you know, if it's not authentic, if it's not real, if you're not being honest about it and they're not being honest about it or whoever, like, what is it anyway? Exactly. It's, it's not, it wasn't real to begin with. Right. But that that's the, the fine line between being tactful versus being. Yeah, because some of this shit is, is how, how you word some shit, you know, like, especially, and, on text. especially with text. Like, mm-hmm. I, like, I don't think any serious conversation should ever really happen via text. Me personally, I think it should always because you, cause you miss the inflection, the tone of voice, like even reading a, pe- a person's face. I almost feel like it's better yeah. to do it in per- like you just lose so much and it can something I've interpreted shit wrong. You know, dude, my wife sometimes will will. Well, I'll put a period at the end of a sentence in a text, and she's and she she takes offense to it. Like, what's, the, what's the period all about? It's a punctuation. Like, I'm like, I'm like, it's the end of a sentence. It's the end of a thought. And she's like, oh, because it comes across a way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, period. like I'm back at period. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, uh, it's not a hard period. Well, though. So then, what's funny is I, I three dot. Yeah, do the ellipses. Ellipses, of course. Yeah. But like I love the ellipses. Sometimes, sometimes, like I've, I've argued with her about it before, and she's like, okay, let's go through our text conversation. Uh-huh. And sure enough, there's tons of like frivolous conversation that I don't put punctuation on it. Yes. You know, but then this one was kind of a serious question. I gave her a serious answer and I put a fucking period on it and she took it away. You know, but it's like, that's all you, you that, that's all. That's the interpretation. Uh, yeah. And and I feel like even though a, a, a face-to-face conversation is still up to interpretation, there's a little bit less to interpret. Yeah. And you can immediate, immediate response yeah. versus having to wait for a text response yep. and then fighting with text. I, I, I like the combination of both. I have, with my serious topic, I usually start with a block of text uh-huh. and then talk to the person. Yeah, I think so, that's so okay, too. Give, so I give them my information. I think that's okay, yeah. too. I think it's okay, too. And sometimes it's okay to go the opposite way. Sometimes it's okay to have that real conversation first. And then, and then be like, clarify. and then, and then now that you know where I'm coming from mm-hmm. now, if you know, the, the scheduling doesn't line up or it's not convenient. Now we can transfer this over to text. Cause you understand the baseline here. Yeah. You have the, the exactly baseline. Yeah. Yeah. The, the combination is what I found to work in the last few weeks. Nice. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm still struggling with this fucking relationship thing, but yeah, it's rough. 
We'll see. But yeah. I'm sorry for the derailing of the show. No, fuck that. That was fucking great. Half an hour. It was good stuff, man. That was, was. great. Um, real quick before we get into notes, uh, there was a, a there's like this still the Snyder Con thing happening, and it looks like they're just going to be showing the three movies or whatever. But like I, I'm just watching from a distance. Uh, I've made peace with all of that situation. Um, obviously, I wish it would continue. It's what I've liked the most out of all this stuff. But um, just to see how fucking crazy some of these fans are. So like you know the the statue of of Superman. Um, that they made to his memorial, mm -hmm. you know, um, he's like down on one knee and the statue is like this with his right hand extended in the air, but it's like kind of almost like limp his wrist for lack of a better term. Like it's like, it's like, you know, it's more like a bow almost than like he's working. Okay. Yeah. Well, they've got a new statue for this promo of this event, the Snyder con event where his hand is up in the air like this. Like, only thing that's changed is the angle of his wrist. And these fans are like, oh, shit. Five fingers, five movies, two more are coming. Oh now that he's like, it's just, just like, Jesus. they use. Sounds, sounds like some old school Star Wars. Do not people. go to the grocery store looking for tinfoil. It's all gone. Gotcha. It's all gone. Gotcha. Um, other than that, too hopeful. I'm I'm more of a negative person. Yeah, I'm like, surprise me with the good shit, so yeah, I don't get disappointed. Because I I know people what people want, right? Because he has this relationship with Netflix. What people want is for DC to have a DC Netflix universe that's just, independent. But they're just, just how that's possible. They're not looking to D, the last thing DC wants to do right now, in my opinion. Then this fucking shit will come out, and I'll be fucking wrong, right? Um, they don't want to muddle anything. They don't want to yeah. muddy anything else. Yeah. They want a clean. If they were smart. They, they want that. a clean universe. If they were smart, <clears throat> but we don't. They don't always make the best decisions. Electric cars, uh -huh. no factories, just very clean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think they already view Joker and the Batman as being messy. I think they it wish is, that, but wasn't. it is messy. It is. But I think, but they both were successful, so yeah. they don't know how to fucking do it, you know. Right. Um, all right, so uh, ski slope slide. So did you guys see this at all? That uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is being sued for a skiing accident. No. Yeah. So I've seen it. They've been covering it on TV. So what's interesting, right? All right. So this guy is suing her. Said that she was coming down the hill, didn't have control smashed into him he's got a concussion broken ribs and all this other shit now, this was in 2016 by the way <laughs> like how many years ago seven yeah she says that's not the case what actually happened was he was skiing came down behind her angled his skis between her legs and then was like brushing up against her perhaps in even a sexual assault kind of way and then they, cr and I'm like, look, Hello? you better, you better pack up these candles and go tell somebody yeah. that's going to believe this shit. Yeah. <laughs> this, this sounds like some bullshit. Take that fucking egg out of your vagina, bro. <laughs> and, and she's, the thing is, the guy's only, he's asking for $300,000. Why doesn't she just, look, I'll give you two fifty and go away. Why? She's countersuing. For a dollar or whatever. <laughs> for a dollar plus uh, uh, legal, legal fees. fees. Yeah. Um, anyway, I just thought that was funny, and they've got her dressed so like she, I, she looks like Steve Jobs. Yeah, Phil pointed it out. Yeah. So they've got her dressed so conservatively and everything else. Like this, you know, it's just so not funny. a candle inside. She's probably losing her mind. Yeah, <laughs> can't smell herself. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mondo has had some pretty drastic losses recently. Uh, so, so yeah, I read I read up on this. I did not realize that Funko had bought Mondo. I didn't either until this story came out. I didn't either. So for the listeners, Funko is obviously the company that owns Funko Pops and all that kind of stuff. They own a ton of other they stuff. They own a ton too, of other know. stuff. And Mondo, uh, I don't know exactly what they're known for. They've done a ton of so one the, six scale stuff. They started out just for for prints. Do not not the singer, not Purple Rain. Okay, I was getting excited. P R I N T S. Mm -hmm. Um, not they, not Prince Harry, <laughs> but they've done like uh, Masters of the Universe. Of late, in the, in the action figure market, they would be known for their six scale uh, uh, Masters of the Universe line. Mm -hmm. I've got a six scale. Um, well, I don't know. It's not six scale. It's a six scale size Iron Giant figure from them. Uh -huh. um, and Funko bought the company, and the founders worked in the print development part of it, and um, they do a lot of like con exclusive shit and stuff they let those guys go right and now they're streamlining some of the other processes at mondo huh i, I didn't even know funko had bought them but apparently uh, it happened a couple years ago yeah 
Uh, but it, they've so they fired all these motherfuckers, mm-hmm. and uh, I just wanted to read some of the quotes because they were kind of interesting about like. You know, uh, our goal is to build the Mondo brand. Our goal is not to turn Mondo into Funko. That's what the CEO of Funko said. Um, and uh, let's see what else. There were some other, like, uh, so uh, the artist Daniel da- Danger, oh man, uh, who has worked name. with Mondo since 2006, said, do they not understand they just lost their entire artist base? Um he says, uh, I want to work with Rob, Mitch, and Eric. He said, they're Mondo. If they're there, it's if they're not there, it's just Funko. Mm. You just consider any property that they're currently working on dead in the water. Wow. Yeah. You know, he said, uh, somebody else went on to say, uh, to me, the heart of Mondo's artistic vision laid with the staff that was let go. And I'm nervous about ongoing and future plan projects continuing with the same enthusiasm or support. I'd love to continue working with Mondo, but if they become a pale imitation of what they were, I'm sure many of us artists in the scene will migrate to whatever creative staff transitions to in the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that from the collectible standpoint, I think it's probably safe because that's what the industry Funko is mostly known for. Right. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, those guys were artists that started the company. They probably, you know, wanted to do some things different than this mega corporation wanted to do. And here's the writing on the wall. They'll pop up somewhere else, like you said, like where the creatives will go next. So right. somebody else will start an art house for creatives and get some licensing and Mondo 2.0. The um, there's some other losses, Christopher, out there in the world. Uh, CW has fired a whole bunch of people too. Oh, it's tragic. Um, because they just got bought out by uh, Next Star. Hang on, That's, CW the like I thought they were Warner Brothers. Right? I thought I know, that was WWWWB. But I think that shit is like because of the way that all of that shit has been sold recently. Uh-huh. I think CW has landed with this company called Next Star. Okay. Wow, that sounds familiar, but probably not for a good reason. Tell me about Nexstar. So I will try to. Okay. Um, uh, so it says the CW is being hit with a new round of layoffs amid the recent changes from their new parent company, Nexstar. On Thursday, a report revealed that more than 15 people, some of whom are in the network's finance and marketing promotional teams, are being affected by this new round. While it's unclear exactly who is being let go by the company, the report hints that it includes mid and high level executives, including some who were in senior vice president roles. Uh, You know, and they go on, but it says, uh, the network already made headlines last spring when it canceled over half a dozen of its new or veteran shows, DC, Entree's Naomi, Batwoman, and Legends of Tomorrow, as well as In the Dark, the Vampire Diaries spinoff Legacies, and the network Robots of Charmed Dynasty. 4,400 and Roswell, New Mexico, all canceled. Hmm. So apparently the CW is reaching a variety of programming. Um, their new variety of program will hopefully undo the network's reported hundred plus million dollar losses. Ooh. I know our uh, CW affiliate here locally is actually owned by the same company as a Fox affiliate. Oh, really? Yeah. Because <laughs> they'll play a lot of the same stuff and the same people host the news. And But there is a, just a, a ton of like, you know, like. A couple years ago, when I was sitting like, hey, look, HBO is like the greatest thing that I've ever, yes. you know, and in between like the, these last couple of years of buyouts and sell offs and everything else, like it just shows you how quickly something can crumble and be yeah. completely revamped, relooked to be almost, uh, you know, unrecognizable from what it once was. G4. You remember that? Too? Yeah. It's came and went and it came again and then it's gone again. Like they tried to fire it back up and it didn't work. Nobody cares anymore. Nope. There was a, a new Renfield trailer that dropped. Oh, so I'll yeah. t- I'll tell I'm you. I'm interested. I, I I I can't wait. The trailers for that they played in front of John Wick were all horror trailers. It was well, I'll call that a horror comedy. It was that. It was the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, I, there's some which looks really movies. fucked Actually, up. I, I want to see that. Yeah, and then another I like one. Movies. Yeah. Oh gosh, the other one was kind of like a horrifying horror movie. I can't remember the name. It was, I don't know. It was related to some other horror franchise, something mm. to do with the creepy dead mom. That she says, "Mom's with the worms now," or something like that. Oh, Oof. great! Sounds like something it, I watched. It was really fucking creepy. Did they have a flash trailer? <laughs> no. You know what's funny is neither did Shazam. That's what you told me. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's very odd. They don't want to muddle trailers. the waters, Bobby. <laughs> oh, I, I, that's supposed to clean it. I, I did want to sidetrack here with the John Wick thing. So, 
uh, if you've been to the movies lately, especially that warehouse cinemas that, that I know I like to go to, they always have like local ads before the movies. Well, there's a local ad for like a gun range mm-hmm. and it's just this couple shooting machine guns. And at the end, the, the wife says to the husband, it's a great date night, isn't it, honey? And he says, yeah, a lot more than going to the movies. And he, they look at the camera. I'm like, oh, <laughs> self-aware. That's pretty cool. Um, but I, I, but John my, Wick. Uh, well, that was, yeah. that was it. I'm like, I'm Good wondering timing. if this is shown in front of anything else. Cause it's obviously pretty on brand for yeah um so we got to talk about these kang attacks and i'm not talking about the ones in quantum mania christopher hey yo um so actor jonathan majors arraigned following arrest on assault charges in manhattan um so officials say that majors was involved in a domestic dispute with a 30 year old woman in new york city the woman told police she was assaulted and majors was taken into custody it's also come out that that's her his girlfriend oh, man i was gonna pop a joke so why, why is he messing with all these old bitches <laughs> police sources say majors called 911 himself to report his concern about his girlfriend with whom he lives when police arrived sources say the girlfriend told a different story that she and majors were in the cab on the way home from brooklyn when he physically attacked her patrol officers noticed some marks on the woman's body and they placed majors under arrest the woman yeah, sustained the woman sustained minor injuries to her head and back. She was taken to the hospital and is in stable condition. Majors was charged with strangulation, assault, and harassment. A representative for Majors denied any wrongdoing by the actor. He has done nothing wrong. We look forward to clearing this up. Hmm. Um, but Phil has said that there is some new hot scoops. Oh man, There's hot, hot the breaking presses. news! Uh, There's some hot scoops coming in. Breaking news two weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> um, Except your Patreon, then you get this tomorrow. <laughs> so Jonathan Majors, a.k.a. Marvel's Kang, has always been an abuser and sociopath. Industry insider shocking tweets go viral. Uh, so Chateau Bunny. Oh, um, yeah, I know her. <laughs> she's uh, She got a blue check? No, she has a snowflake next to her. Wow. Uh, she retweeted, now we know who this tweet was about. So... A.B. Allen said there's a particular actor relatively new on the scene who Twitter has violently fallen head over heels for who in actuality is a vicious, cruel, abusive human being both professionally and in his personal life. And every new viral thirst tweet about him drives me insane. Hmm. Huh. Well, well, I, I I didn't read the article that I had heard last night that he it was kind of a known commodity. You know, I guess yeah. Like, I mean, he's he's like he. They were. I, I I don't mean this in the new fucking trendy way, but they were grooming him to be the next kind of big mm-hmm. Hollywood name. I mean, yeah, he's, got, he's getting he's going to be very everywhere. Yeah, he's got a. Well, he did have. He had a commercial for the army, even. Yeah, they, I, they, and the army's pulled it. I, I'm sure they have. Um, Lord, Lord, stay clear Lord knows. Lord knows the army doesn't want anybody like that. Yeah. A news reporter just tweeted he heard rumors for months of majors being unpleasant to work with and a bully to people. I'm completely shocked, but I'm actually starting to think it might be real. If it happened to me, or I had seen it direct, or I hadn't seen it directly, or I had seen it directly, I would have. But the people he has abused, mistreated, chose to stay silent, perhaps for their own safety. It's not my role to out what he did and thereby out them without their consent. Yeah. Um. But I mean, Marvel stay clear of controversy for a long time. I'm... Yeah. How, who's... Well, since Gina Carano, it was the last time Disney. What is, yeah. well, even just looking at it broader. Yeah. But I mean, you know, DZ has their fucking Ezra and their fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. So, and then the last thing is uh, that's gonna be, that could be a big deal because if he's set up to be like the next, you know, a big thing in the Marvel universe, and they have to pull him. Thanos is gonna come back and kill him. I mean, yeah. he's just gonna go like this. Or just maybe he probably already signed the rights away to his face, so we, we don't need faces. It's fine. That's right. Profit of the faceless. Joe. Exactly. And then the last note is uh, these images that have come out. Uh, they were actually they were done on Valentine's Day supposedly, but I don't know why I'm seeing them so late. Um, are these Gaga pictures of as Harley Quinn? Oh, I just or, saw them this past week too. I don't. I put them in the chat, I believe. Yes, no, Joker. Oh, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, me too. That's week, when I saw them. Yes, yes yeah, same. I, I had, same. Um, I, say, I, I don't think they've been out. I think they. Yeah, just I don't got know. Released this week. I love it. I'm not mad at it. It, it fits the it. universe. Yeah. It fits the universe perfectly. I love the diamonds and the pantyhose. Mm-hmm. Um, the diamonds on her shirt. Uh, the the red, black, and white theme, like in her clothing. Um, I think her face is right for it. Like the way it's all, you know, n- not just like the aesthetics, but also like the the, the more subtle makeup, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. hair pulled back and kind of dingy. Um, I just need to hear her say pudding. 
You know, I'll tell you. So, so, so supposedly I saw footage of it mm-hmm. where she's like walking up the court steps and it seems like Joker is there. It's either Joker or like a Joker stand that's dressed as Joker. Um, and this woman supposedly says something along the lines of like, go to hell as she's walking up and she grabs her and kisses her on the lips and says, you'll be there with me and continues. No, that's very on brand. <laughs> nice. I think it'll be a fun, fun movie for sure. I'm, uh, I'll tell you what, man, not for nothing. Like, and I don't, I'm not like, I don't like dislike her music. Uh, I like fame. I like her first album. And then I like some songs here and there in her career. Like I, I think, and I think she's an artist and I think she has mm-hmm. like a point of view and all that kind of stuff. Like she's not like a, a product you know, in the same yeah. way that a lot of pop stars are. Um, but I have become somewhat smitten with her since she's gotten more into movies. Like, I think she's amazing as an actress. Like, I loved her in um, the Be A Star movie, The Country, the country Singer. Like, I loved valid? her in that. I loved her in uh, House of Gucci. And uh, I look like I'm going to love her in this they did an interview with or a quick question to Margot Robbie about like how she felt about it. And she had some like response. She was like, look, she's like, I've, I want uh, Harley Quinn to be this character that's passed down to other great actors and actresses over time, the same way Batman has been or James Bond or whatever the case may be. So I'm ecstatic about it. I think I, I you know, I, I, I like the Joker movie. Um, but like I'm super, I'm now getting super excited about this. She's, when does when does it come out? I think October. Oh, is it this year? Oh, I think so. Fast. A good Halloween flick. Yeah, Bobby, I have a memory, and every time I see or, th- or hear Lady Gaga, I think of it. Mm-hmm. Of you saying something along the lines of you didn't want your daughters listening to Lady Gaga because of something that was overtly. This was, I mean, this was legitimately six years ago. Uh-huh. Your girls are obviously older. Something to do with the poker face song. Oh. <laughs> No, so I didn't want them singing it. That, I, that's it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. That's it. Yes, yeah. I, but I, I remember that distinctly. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, "What? Well, I don't. I don't. Have, I didn't have the same point of view because my. You know, I don't know. I just didn't. But right. so every time I hear or hear of or hear Lady Gaga, I always think of you and yeah. the absence of that from your daughter's lives. <laughs> yeah, I just like of, of all like I, I. I think I was. I'm okay with all the other songs. It was just that one where it's like I just don't want my kids like poker face, po poker face. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not poke her face quite yet, shall we? Um, let's just hold hands or some shit. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, I'm excited. It feels good to be excited again. I'm excited about The Flash. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about Mario Brothers. Hey, we bought tickets for Mario Brothers already. Did you really? Wow. Mm-hmm. And I'm somewhat excited, lowercase e, for Guardians 3. Um, you know, I'm, I guess I'm potentially excited. Uh... All right, and then questions. So uh, this is from Kev, and uh, he writes in. Uh, he writes in with a Joe quote. Oh boy! Hello. At first, I thought he was a Joel Ortiz fan. I thought he was saying "yeah," but he's not. He's saying "yo." Yeah. Hey gang, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like Joe keeps getting upset about his lack of talent. Friend, you're just looking at the wrong place. You're looking at the future when you should be looking at the now. You say you can't do this or you can't do that. Perfect. The hard part's over. You figured out what you can't do. (laughs) So now you can focus on what you can do and learn from there. That's all there is to it. Learning, just learning. And after all that, some more learning. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner then learning. You want a side of learning for your learning every day, every month, every year, forever. And I'll save you some, and I'll save you some time. You'll never be a master because enough will never be enough. So just keep growing while you're growing. Make friends laugh as hard as you can and enjoy highlights along the way. Hopefully I didn't take too much of your time. Much love. No, thank you very much. What That's a beautiful, very, what a beautiful very thing to say. That's very, That's awesome. very nice. Appreciate that. Um, we get one from Andrew, Andrew, M and he says what's up wizards um the is uh the conversation from two episodes back near St. Patrick's Day had me curious why it is that only certain holidays celebrate national heritages get celebrated by the vast majority of US citizens i was able to come Alcohol. to this conclusion yes. america's only give a shit about celebrating a nationality when they can drink publicly to nope. it <laughs> Case in point is St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo, two days outside of New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, where you can just get shit faced on a random Tuesday afternoon, and it's mostly acceptable. There's still plenty of Americans who celebrate Chinese New Year and Juneteenth, and while they're not as widespread as the prior two, it could be argued that they are celebrated more respectfully than them as well. And no one gives a shit about Christopher Columbus Day, even though it's the most fucked up of the bunch. <sighs> 
racist. Columbus Day only exists to placate the anger of Italian immigrants. God damn, I'm ha! Andrew M. I'm going uh, to placate the um, the anger of Italian immigrants in 1891 when 11 Italian immigrants were lynched in New Orleans after a murder trial found them not guilty. Considered the largest lynching in U.S. history, President Benjamin Harrison, knowing Italian Americans viewed Christopher Columbus in high regard at the time, decided to declare it a new holiday in their honor instead of seeking justice for the murders. HBO made a TV movie about wow. it in '99 called Vendetta with Christopher Walken. That's not wow. bad. Hmm. Uh, Christopher Columbus is, Day is a stupid holiday, but the reason it exists should be what kids uh, should learn about in school. Anyways, just thought it was um, just thought I'd ex- extrapolate on that point with a little history lesson. Hope it doesn't bring the vibes down too much. Not at all, no, Andrew M. Great. You should. Check out that uh that what was that podcast I recommended the history one um uh, yep it with, was a history with podcast. two British people no not that one it was uh, hang on I, I can um, tell you because I don't use Spotify for anything else in uh, but about still. Christopher Columbus because it's uh it's pretty interesting I, I, I recommend it not that I disagree with what you're saying here but I do recommend you give that a listen because it, it does give a uh, I think a a fair a fairer view and not to say that you don't have one I can only, I can only go off this email but it gives a fairer view to Christopher Columbus than any uh I've ever heard. Uh, I believe is it uncancelled history? Uncancelled history. Yeah. Um on the Christopher Columbus one. It's interesting. Uh but yeah, interesting information. And there's some there's some stuff that happened in Baltimore with the Christopher Columbus statue and stuff and Italians here and uh I'll leave that I'll leave that I'll leave that for those that know. Um all right, so the last one, God bless, you're killing me. Uh Nick K. Hi, Bobby. And everybody else who happens to be there this episode. We've been pretty consistent recently. I don't think that's fair. I don't either. Um, First, I would like to thank you for taking your time to read this email. And it is some time, so I appreciate the thanks. I hope it (laughs) finds you well. I've been watching your videos for a couple years now and have recently started listening to Nerve Rage. I enjoy the little insights you got into your guy's life and the stories from your kids. It makes me think about how I would love to be a dad someday. A couple weeks ago, the question came along whether non-transforming Transformers are considered to be Transformers. And you answered that they, in fact, are. Now, I've Obviously, this was in regard to figures like 3-0. While I do agree, my girlfriend... Uh, while I do agree to my girlfriend, the statement didn't make much sense. Now, she's not really into Transformers like us, so her opinion is from the outside looking in. But it did end up raising a question for me, and this is, what is the value of a Transformer being able to transform? With so many figures coming out... Um, uh, not all transforming figures are made equal. Like some are trash and some are difficult to transform, whatever the case may be. The point has come up a couple of times in your more recent videos in which the transformation can be tedious, uh, non-intuitive, problematic, et cetera, et cetera. Many people, both collectors and reviewers say they like flipping their figures back and forward. That's not me. Um, But most of us display the figures in bot mode and maybe transform it once, if at all. Now, I do feel an inherent value in being able to actually transform my figures, but I can't quite articulate why I feel this way. When non-transforming figures are often more solid, more poseable, and have more detail, what keeps us from getting both just bot and alt mode representations? Uh, In the wonderful trans Ronin case, the bot looks about 90%. Uh, I don't think I think we can move past that. Anyway, I hope this email isn't too long. It was, but all, it's all love. I got a little carried away and wanted to talk about a lot of things. Uh, I love what you do and both support and respect you. I love you too. Your channel and podcast have made me feel like a proud member of this community and continue to give me so much more enjoyment and hobby. I've attached a couple pictures to show you guys what I've learned from the collection critiques and how I pose my figures. I hope you like it. Um, much love from the Netherlands. Huh, nice. Oh, that, that's probably our big Finland. Um, <laughs> that's why. Hey, thanks yeah. for the support, buddy. Thanks yeah. for making us number one. Whatever. What do we got there? Uh, so he's got a picture of uh, some masterpiece figures ish. I don't know. Okay. You know. Okay. Stop okay. sitting up there. Cool, cool. There you go. So uh, I mean, I, I don't think know. it depends on why you like Transformers. Uh, right. I think it's really personal whether you want something to transform or not. Yeah, and I think it's layered, right? It's personal. I think I think it's layered. I think it's like. You know, there's people that like, so there's that, right? Why do you buy the toys? Do you buy it for the gimmick thing element of it, the puzzle element, the what it can do? Or do you buy it because you love the character? Or do you buy it because it looks cool? And, you know, because there's people like Robert has bought representations, non transforming and transforming of characters he doesn't give two fucks about. It's because he really thinks cool. they look cool. Yeah. Um, and the people who buy tra- two of transformable things to display them and spot and uh, yeah, alt mode. You yeah. know, I I think he might have hit the nail on the head there. Why don't they sell? I'll just use the easiest one because it's right in front of mine. Optimus Prime and the super articulated version, and then a fucking truck that is yeah. the same scale. Because you could put them put them in the same box. That's there. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think that like um, just, did we just invent fifth party? <laughs> fifth party. Holy shit! I think that like um, <laughs> you know, to your to your to your girlfriend um. 
you know, stay out of stay out tell of nerd her, business. Tell her to kick rocks. Stay out of nerd business. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> to your girlfriend, I, tell I her think, I don't want to buy any death sticks. I, I think my easiest uh, explanation of that is that there is transforming the verb and transformers the noun. You know, transformers are a thing. And many do transform, which is the verb, um, but they're not mutually. And then third party just muddles that because, you know, they're not transformers, quote, copyright. Right, right, 1984 or whatever. Right, right, right. So I think like, um, you know, my attraction to this shit is character based. Uh, I could give a fuck if they any of them transform, Um, you know, but I'm not I don't I don't enjoy transforming them at all. (laughs) Like, uh, and it's funny because, you know, looking at a lot of these collection critiques and shit, I think a lot of people don't enjoy the action figure. Think so? I do. Like, when I see these displays and they're just like, not one of their figures oh, yeah, are posed. Or like, the pose real fucked up. <clears throat> but I'm sure they flipped it back and forth a yeah, hundred times. Right. It's like, that's that's the job, is to transform. Yeah. And they don't enjoy the action figure element in the same it's way more, that it's I It's more of a... Instead of an actual display, Bobby, it's just ease of access. Yeah. I, I, I want to pick like, up that yeah. fourth party inferno and <laughs> try not to break it back and forth. You know? exactly. I, exactly. I like both. I mean, I pose my figures. I like, I mean, I'm into aesthetics and arts and stuff, but I also won't buy a transformer that don't transform or any robot that's supposed to transform and don't transform. Right, right. Which is a preference yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a preference thing. And, and to be fair, like, uh, I'm not sure, like, I've never had the luxury of being on the other side, right? Where the majority of them don't transform. Yeah. You, so you I've, start, I, that's, you I've have always choice. been in the yeah. pocket where they've had to transform. So I just went that route. If I was, if I was given the option now, like in a, in, I'm not, you know, like, and, and I was just starting new. I'm not sure which direction I would go. I didn't see <clears> the sun until <throat> I was a man. Yeah. yeah, yeah and it was exactly. blinding. Yeah, and, and 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 you know, I mean, how many figures get broken due to the transformation? How many are damaged? Oh, or, oh depends God. if you're Bobby Skullface or not. Yeah, that's fair. Too. Depends if I'm selling a two hundred dollar figure and I have to transform it to put it back in the box. I'm definitely breaking it. Yeah, so I, I, I I've always, only one that I know. It's just one. I always say, uh, I am not going. I'm, I'm shipping I'm, it yeah, the way it is I'm, now. Yeah, so that yeah. I don't cause it any damage. Um, Did and, I ever tell you the story about? <laughs> Shout out to Brave. Yeah. I was in Atlanta for a work thing. Brave lives around Atlanta, and I don't remember what action figure it was. It might have been an X Transbots mini bot figure. I don't remember uh-huh. who. And long story short, we were trying to connect all day. Ended up getting complicated. So I'm like, hey, here's a hotel I'm going to be at later today if you just want to drop it off. So we dropped it off there. And I get it. And I'm, I, it's something I had to be there for Monday morning. So I got there on like Sunday afternoon. I'm like, I have nothing to do. I'm going to fuck with these Transformers. So I start opening the boxes. And I open his, the boxes. And I'm like, oh, he threw some extra shit in there. Nope. He just didn't transform them <laughs> and wrapped them in bubble wrap and put them in the box. I'm like, this is telling. Yeah. I think I flipped those to somebody else pretty quick. but Right. But yeah, I'm the same way. Um, and with that, uh, that's it. Shout out to the rest of the Nerve Rage team. Phil on uh, Facebook. I mean, on, on Twitter in our notes. And Dante on Facebook. And Raul on Instagram still for the time being. Uh, still working on getting that sorted out. Uh, Ricky Tiki Timber on the videos. And, you know, everybody else that helps out. We appreciate you. And um, shout out to the rest of the Cool Table. If you listen to this, you're part of the Cool Table, too. And with that, Flappy Labia. Chase. DJ. Tight dick player.